football contest tonight. It's the North Coast Section 4A Championship from the Oakland Coliseum as the Pittsburgh Pirates try to end the 150-game winning streak of the De La Salle Spartans. Dan Wall and Steve Sanchez is always here on Comcast, the last game of the season. And Steve, right off the bat, can Pittsburgh win? Well, sure they can, Dan. I mean, there's always hope, but uh, it's, it's going to be an uphill battle for them. Maybe the rain's going to, you know, uh, kind of neutralize each other. I don't know, but, yeah, they got a chance. And whenever time you got a football game and uh, they're, they're peaking at the right time, they got a chance, yeah. Well, one guy that's really given them a chance is Brian Robinson. 600 yards rushing in the last three games, 10 touchdowns. He's really turned out to be a, a superstar for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And, you know, Dan, on top of that, they're really peaking at the right time, like Coach Galley said in the paper, and everybody knows that. It doesn't take a genius to figure it out. Uh, I think this is going to be De La Salle's toughest game probably all year. Yeah. Pittsburgh's probably the only team in this whole area that can even uh, match up right. with them on the field. For De La Salle, of course, lots of stars, lots of D1 players. Mm -hmm. One guy that, uh, he didn't play the first five games, but he's come back strong as Cameron Colvin. And, you know, he's just real explosive, real fast, the real deal. I mean, he's, he's a, a great running back, and, uh, you know, the way they're coached and uh, the way their whole program is, uh, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're for real, Dan. They're always there, you know. Well, you know what, folks? It could be history tonight if they can end the streak. It was almost 12 years ago to the day, December 7, 1991, the Pittsburgh won 35-27 right here at the Oakland Coliseum, the last time De La Salle lost a football game. We'll be back with all the action next on Comcast. Tonight's Comcast Game of the Week is made possible by A&B Creative Trophies. They specialize in awards, letterman jackets, embroidery, and team trophies on West 6th Street in Antioch. Simply the best selection, price, and service. That's A&B Creative Trophies of Antioch. Mention the Comcast Game of the Week and receive 5% off your next order. Lone Tree Golf Course, Antioch's secret treasure. Built in 1934, this wonderfully scenic 18-hole golf course is a golf value. Longtime PGA golf professionals Pat Kane and Jack Oakley host many tournaments and functions and have private and group lessons. Their junior golf program is the best in Northern California and has helped many kids learn to enjoy the game. The next time you feel like teeing it up or hitting some range balls, give Lone Tree Golf Course a call. Mellows, heating, air conditioning, and sheet metal, serving the greater East Bay and beyond, residential, commercial, and industrial, keeping the East Bay comfortable for over 26 years. Let their helpful, courteous sales staff help you with all your air and heating needs. That's Mellows, 1241 Main Street in Oakley. The new Mecca Cafe on Railroad Avenue in downtown Pittsburgh. Serving Contra Costa and beyond for over 30 years. Eat in or order it to go. Guillermo and his crew cook with pride. Italia's Italian restaurant, deli, and catering. Delicious pasta, meatballs, parmesan dishes, and more. Specialty sandwiches like roasted eggplant. Cucciadotti's and other traditional cookies. And don't forget the cannolis. Family owned and operated, that's Battaglia's, Antioch's oldest Italian restaurant at 3100 Contra Loma Boulevard in the Save Mart Shopping Center. S&S Import Service on 10th Street, specializing in your foreign car. State-of-the-art tools and equipment with friendly and helpful service. Let Randy and Mike take care of your auto repair needs. S&S will also take your used oil. Caring for our community, S&S Import Service, 806 West 10th Street in Antioch. Brandon Theaters of Concord in Pittsburgh, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems and stadium-style seating. Check out the Brendan Theater website for great savings ideas. RSC Rental Service Corporation in Martinez. RSC offers a wide variety of equipment specific to the petrochemical industry as well as the general contractor and homeowner. We deliver straight to the site and have a fully trained staff of mechanics and office personnel to fit every need. That's Rental Service Corporation, 4030 Pacheco Boulevard in Martinez. Paramount Technology of Concord, located behind Tower Records in Concord, Paramount Technology has it all. Mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for Delta RC Raceway and Hobby Shop. Northern California's largest radio control racing facility behind the fairgrounds on 10th Street in Antioch. Delta RC features a well-stocked shop, world-class banked pave, oval, and on-road track, year-round, indoors in the winter, off-road racing, and one of California's last dirt oval racing programs. That's Delta RC Raceway and Hobby Shop in Antioch. Jim Lanter and Carol Seaver, and experience of over 31 years, they take pride in helping the client understand their coverage. They'll help you make good, sound financial decisions regarding insurance, mutual funds, banking, and home loans. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's Jim Lanter and Carol Seavers at 716 West 2nd Street in Antioch. 
thanks again to all of our friends from the Comcast Game of the Week. Authentic Italian atmosphere. Rocco's Ristorante. Room for the whole family. Rocco's Ristorante. Pizza, beer, sports. Rocco's! Great place for your next team party. Rocco's. The best pizza in the East Bay. Rocco's. Your table is always ready at Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria at the corner of Oak Grove and Ignacio in Walnut Creek. What are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing, McFly? I'm changing my oil. Did Colonel Clink lose his hat? You're just mad because you don't got one. Listen, we got a game to do. It's not Montevista and Chad Ramon, is it? No, it's Los Lomas. J.C. Lewis, remember the moms? Ooh, we got to go. By the way, Sanchez, are you changing the oil in your car or your hair? My car. You know what? It's late. We got to go. Let's go. Steve, what are you going to do with that oil? I'm throwing it in the garbage. Steve, didn't you learn anything last year watching our games on AT&T? You don't put your oil in the garbage. You don't? No, it'll end up in the river. The river? And the bay. The bay? And the ocean. The ocean? The, all three. In the words of Johnny Carson, I did not know that. Take your used oil to a certified used oil recycling center. Most will even take your oil filters. Or if you have curbside oil and filter recycling, just seal the oil in a plastic clear container and put the filter in a Ziploc bag and leave it on the curb with the rest of the recyclables. For more information, call 1-800-NO-DUMPING or check out the website at www.funnelhead.com. Everybody's heard of the streak, and sometimes it even gets a little bit tedious. But it's not as though the Spartans haven't tried to spice things up by playing nationally ranked teams. Eight times since 97, they've played nationally ranked teams, and the games really haven't been all that close. All the time, although they've only trailed once during that entire span, they trailed three to nothing against Evangelist Christian back in October. So they played on national TV, they've played in front of the big spotlight, they've played uh, good teams all over the country, yet the theme remains the same. They're just better than everybody else. Guys? Thanks, Tony, and uh, we're going to send it down to the field for the national anthem. You can see the captains out on the field were Sean Harris, Brian Robinson, Percy uh, Rob excuse me, Brian Robinson and Percy Robinson, number 93. Here's the umpire, uh, the referee for tonight's game. Unfortunately, folks, I just got to explain to you real quickly. Due to the rain and all the craziness that's out here, we don't have some of the refs' names. We don't have some of the cameras that we would right. normally have. So we're just doing the best we can out here tonight. We got a patch up job, and we're just going to try to bring the game to you and just sit back and have some popcorn and enjoy the game. Robert Crowley is another captain for Pittsburgh. Well, that's Ken Leffel as the referee, so I can tell you that right now. Yeah, we Parker know Hanks is one of the uh, the captains tonight. 
Willie, alongside of Willie Glasper. Yeah. Number 50 for uh, De La Salle, Steve Fujimoto, and 51 Chris Biller are the captains. And Pittsburgh will kick to De La Salle, and they will kick from our right to our left. And uh, I think they're going to bring the teams out on the field. Maybe because of the rain, they held the game, and there's not gonna, they're not going to have the introductions. In the Miramonte-San Lorenzo game, by the way, let's congratulate the Miramonte yeah. Matadors, who we cover a lot. Coach Wade, uh, congratulations to your staff. They, uh, they, won, uh, they beat San Lorenzo in the 2A championship. So uh, everything's done now, Steve. This yep, is this it. This is it. This is uh, the Grand Poopah. It's Poopah. Whatever. Okay. But, you know, I, got, I spent a little time with Roger Theater before the game, and he was really high on Humphreys. Uh, at Maramani, he says, I love the kid. I think he's got great form and whatever. And, folks, anything you hear, anything that goes wrong, <laughs> it's not, not us, it's God. So, so you're hang gonna, in there with us. You're going to hear some crackles and some, yeah. some pops. We, we it's like, it's going to sound like Rice Krispies That's tonight. Right. And we may lose the pitcher. We may come back. We don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> We're just kind of riding by the seat of our tails That's right, right. now, as I mean, they say, Dan. pouring since about 4.30 out here. It's now 7.30 at night on uh, Saturday, December 6th. You'll probably be watching this on the weekend of the... Uh, the uh, 13th, 13th and 14th, and 14th yeah. next weekend. And, Dan, what do you think? Let me ask you a question since we've got a little bit of time here. The weather, do, do you see it favoring anybody or, or on these? Because you know both I, these teams. I what just, do you think? I just think that any time you can get anything, anything different uh, versus De La Salle. Uh, you okay, know, that's tonight, a good point. Tonight, Pittsburgh's going to start Juan Corral at quarterback. He's okay. a lefty. Right. Different, you know, from the last time okay. they played. All right. They're playing in Oakland. It's a bigger place. I don't care how good you are. There's these guys, and I know that De La Salle is by far the most superior high school football team probably ever assembled over the past tw 12 to 20 years. Right. Still, there's got to be butterflies in some of these guys' stomachs. Oh, well, sure. They're playing at the Oakland Coliseum. Right. They're heroes, the Raiders, so for some of these kids have played here. And I think the rain might equalize the game a little bit. You know, it might. One thing about Pittsburgh, they're a little bit more of a mucker kind of team. They're bigger. Right. right. Whereas with De La Salle, they're, they're, it's more technique, it's more strength, it's more speed. And sometimes on a field like this, you know, yeah. the, it can get sloppy, the ball can be wet. I mean, look at the field out there. It, it looks like uh, you know what? You know, they're playing in a pond. And, and another thing, remember this, Dan. What happens a lot of times, people think just because it's raining, they're going to grind the ball down they're going to run it they're going to do the old smash mouth football but i'll tell you what a lot of times look for the passing because remember the defender don't know where that guy's going there's, on offense there's the stand uh, standing water that's out on the field but, right now but i hope you get my point you know the defender the offensive guy knows where he's going the defender don't know where he's going he's got the advantage of course maybe the quarterback with the bigger hands has advantage too i don't know we just have to see Dan. there's a lot of intangibles you know come into play so so pittsburgh is 10-1-1 one and, one, and this is the thing that uh, that coach galley was talking about it's very unusual steve they were 10-1-1 one one in 1991 okay. when they started uh, when they beat de la salle the last time all right they tied in the third week that season they tied in the third week this season okay they lost to de la salle at home in 91 they lost to de la salle at home in 2000. Okay. So it parallels very nicely. Does that mean probably the best Pittsburgh squad since then on the field tonight against one of the best De La Salle squads of the last couple of years? So Coach Lattisser, though, said in the paper uh, this morning, and I, I don't know if this was, uh, I think he was talking to Terry Edson, the uh, athletic director and, and defensive coordinator. He said that, you know, he knew that they were that something was going wrong. It just didn't feel right in '91. He right. kind of he almost predicted that situation, and he was right. They lost the game right here at the Coliseum. Well, I'm a I'm a big stickler for all that stuff. Don't mean nothing. I mean, you're out here now. This is a decade later. No matter what happened back then, what happened now, it's just it's two different things. Well, Pittsburgh had a big barbecue over at their new football facility last night. Yeah, there's Coach Lattisser on the sidelines. He looks like he's going duck hunting. Well, you know the thing about Coach Ladd is that. Uh, a lot of people don't know the mystique about him. Uh, I recommend you get the book by Neil Hayes and read about it. And uh, before you judge De La Salle, let's, uh, you need to know a little bit more about him. There's a lot of people who do know about him. We've got to know him a little bit. And, you know, I just respect the whole thing that they do over there. And uh, it's a great program. And uh, they, they look after their kids. And they got a lot of dedicated kids who sacrifice to make things work over there. And that's what it's all about. So let's set it up for you. Pittsburgh in the orange. Now, tonight, they're both wearing dark colors. Kind of interesting yeah. tonight, Steve. In the orange with the black helmets, white pants. De La Salle in the customary green, the big green machine we like to call them with the silver pants and the silver helmets. Ricardo Hurtado will kick tonight and, and for folks, Pittsburgh, and there he is. To be to interrupt you, Dan, but folks, if you look in the crowd, everybody is underneath the overhead. Yeah, there's so tons we, of people. There's tons of people. You just can't see them. You can't see them. They're, they're all here. They're here, though. Glasper <laughs> and Colvin are deeper De La Salle. The Spartans 12-0. That's not a shock, Steve, since they haven't lost for 12 years. 150 in a row. The bands are on their feet. The crowd is ready. And despite the rain, we should have a great spectacle out here tonight. Hopefully to live up to uh, last night's 37-36 triple overtime 3A game. Good kick by Hurtado. 
And this is Glasper at the eight yard line. And you can see the footing already, Steve, is gonna be very treacherous. It looks like they're playing out somewhere in a marsh. And there's the uh, first big tackle of the game. They're gonna take over near the 20 yard line. Here's the offense for De La Salle. Gutierrez the quarterback, Terrence Kelly and Willie Glasper are the running backs. Cameron Colvin and Alex Straw the wide receivers. Parker Hanks a very good tight end. Across the front line, Lama, Wilhelmi, Fujimoto, Biller and Bailau for coach B Bob Latticer and the 12 and 0 De La Salle Spartans. Well, Dan, here we go, and uh, the footage should tell a story this first series with what we're going to get. This is Terrence Kelly up the middle, and you know Pittsburgh has the NFL-sized defensive line led by a number of players who made that tackle, and we'll tell you right now who they are on the Pittsburgh defense. Robert Crowley, he's the small guy in there with Percy Robinson, Ron Shank, and Rashawn Harris. Robinson and Harris, all league performers this year. Very good linebackers, Junior Tino Felice, Steve's favorite player, Saka Fafidi, and Miguel Blanche. In the backfield, Wyatt Blackman, Gorey, and Brian Robinson doing double duty for Coach Vic Galley and the 10-1-1 Pittsburgh Pirates. Pick up a five on the first. Uh, carry Dan, it's uh, second and five to go for a first. Right up the middle. Gutierrez, the quarterback, handoff. Oh, a great play. A great play by, and that's one of those great linebackers, Blanche, who came through. Steve, it might be a little treacherous later to try to tell you if they run up in the middle a lot who, who these players are yeah, with all because, this mud. You know, let's watch a replay right here. He reads it real well, real nice leg tackle, and folks, well, that's what they're playing in tonight, that's right there. It. It's, it's, it's muck. It and was you know, a lot Dan, of fun to play in that when you were a kid, but I don't oh, know yeah. if you're, you got a 150-game winning streak on the line if you're going to like it too much. Oh, they're going to love it. Believe me, they're out there for the challenge. It don't matter. It's all about responding to the adverse effects around you. Gain of one, third and four. Play action. Gutierrez has time. Throws over the middle. Hanks is wide open, and he drops it. Hanks, the tight end, a great linebacker and tight end for De La Salle, was wide open. Now, yep. it might not have went all the way due to the field, and that just goes to show you, Steve, on a dry field in October, this is probably, might have been a touchdown. Well, look at the protection he has right there. He throws a really nice ball, and it's just right there in his hands, and that's something you don't see a whole lot from Parker Hanks right there. Great player. Great career at De La Salle. That's something you just don't see, and it's all due to the weather right there. What a great throw, though. Jonathan Gio is the punter for De La Salle. Nice kick. Comes down to Derek Davis at the 35-yard line. This is Davis looking for an angle. Gets outside, and he gets back to about the 40-yard line. He's taken down by Alex Stroud there on special teams. Here's a look at the Pittsburgh offense. There are some changes tonight due to injury. Of course, Juan Corral's done a great job since he's took over for Vince Zeno, who's out with a uh, still suffering the effects of a concussion. Saka Fafidi in tonight for Benjamin Blackman, a fullback. Brian Robinson, a great running back. Crowley and Clift are two very good wide receivers. Robert Cox is the tight end. Across the front line, Malakiu Hernandez, McConnus, Pfeiffer, and Harris. Rashawn Harris coming to a D1 school near you. And Dan, I, I got to tell you, this whole game's going to happen in Inside the box on both sides offense and defensive ball that's where it's going to be won and lost at in the trenches and there's a uh, you can see how slippery it is right now Robinson doesn't even get back to the line yep. of scrimmage great pursuit that time Stroud was over there number 28 off the pile 28 Terrence Kelly he yep. was in there late Dan and uh, that tells you let's watch a pursuit right here he almost loses the ball on the snap right there he recovers look at that right there that is just Stroud was uh, Here's the De La Salle defense for you. Really penetrated really well on that You play. see a lot of names going both ways for De La Salle here. Well, Drasba, Pittori, Baylau, and Biller across the front line. Parker Hanks, Terrence Kelly, and Alex Stroud, great linebackers. Glasper, Payne, Colvin, and Watson in the defensive secondary for Terry Edson, one of the best defensive coordinators in high school football. Draw play to Robinson. Robinson has some yardage this time. Might have got back to the original line of scrimmage, yeah. Steve. Uh, Hanks was there alongside Kelly, Kelly to make the Hanks. tackle. Same uh, suspects on that play, Dan. And, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know how many big plays you're going to see. De La Salle was just a hair for making a big play the last time they had the ball. But uh, I still believe inside the box here is where these games going to be determined at. But uh, Corral, what a great job he's really done for coming in for Sino. I mean, his, his rating's got to be off the charts, whatever it is. It's well, phenomenal. you know, he, had, he was 8-9 for 275, three touchdowns against Antioch. Last week he threw three touchdown passes. Yeah. Him and David Clift have been hooking up. Now, Clift is in the game. He's in the slot on the right side here on third and ten. And then there's a, uh, I believe, that, now this is something that's interesting, and it's going to be a delay, Steve. Actually, tonight we have the clocks in the right. end zone. That's right. Now, someone, I think Pittsburgh called timeout and got out of this. Yeah, Actually, they did. De La Salle called timeout. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. De La Salle must not yeah, like they what did. they saw. They, 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 yeah. 
It's third and nine, Dan, and uh, you know, you got three timeouts in the first half. There's Coach. Uh, That's Coach Aliotti on the sideline. Joe yeah. Aliotti from Pittsburgh High yeah. School went to a Boise State University. Yeah. Was drafted by the Los Angeles Express. I am part of the Joe Aliotti memorabilia and uh, trivia society. By the way, Steve, I just want to let you know that. <laughs> There's Vincino on the sidelines right there, and. Uh, too you know, bad he can't play in this game tonight. No, but you know what? Uh, he's had a great career, and uh, he's one of the main reasons they're here tonight. Yeah, he's got uh, some Division One schools looking at him. Oh, he yeah. suffered a concussion in the last couple of minutes against Clayton Valley, the game we brought you back in uh, late October. And uh, that might be Coach Galley. I'd have to see the front of his head. Not. That's not Coach oh, Galley. There's Bill Gay over to the yeah. side. There's Galley coming off the field yeah, right Yeah, Galley's now. out there on the field right now. Yeah. Great guy. Had a... a Visited with uh, Coach Galley a number of times this week. He was very excited that we were able to get this game on. Third and ten. Corral, play action, looking to throw, steps up in the pocket. He can run. Yes, he can. He's back to the line of scrimmage. Spins, and he's going to be very close. Oh, he's going to get he it. He got it. He got he, a first down. That last spin move goes going to move the chains for him, Dan. What oh, a no, I don't know, though. This is going to be close. Nope, they're nope. calling it fourth. Nope, they're calling it fourth. This is going to be fourth and very short. This is this is where you, you play the field position game. That got Clay nope. Valley back in the game last, uh, last night, Steve, playing the field position game. Let's watch the replay right here. And right here, here's Corral. He's got plenty of time to throw, which is a good thing. But, well, the pressure gets to him. But right here, you know, legs can beat you as good as an arm. And he does a great job. Good camera angle. Right there, there's a nice necktie right there, but what a good effort for him to try to move it. The coach right there thought he had it. You can see how slippery it is. Glasper missed that first tackle, and then it was Parker Hanks who knocked him out of bounds. Just short, it's gonna be fourth and one, and number 88 for Pittsburgh. Chris Terry is on to punt. The lone deep back. Well, they almost Coleman. got it, Dan. What a punt, though, beautiful punt. It should, should get deaden with yep. that water, and it does. And right about the 10, yep. nine. So that's where De La Salle take over. They got to go 90 yards to score. No score, 7.45 to go first quarter. The Comcast Game of the Week brought to you by great friends of the program here on Comcast every week. And they include Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria in Walnut Creek. Contra Costa Clean Water Program and Mr. Funnelhead. Mazay Pontiac in Pittsburgh. ParamountTechnology.com. Brandon Theaters, where you can see The Last Samurai started right. this week with Tom Cruise. Okay. SNS Import Service. Caltech Pest Management. Bobby Gonzaga. Williams Company. Thanks to all the great friends that help us bring you these games every week. And it was I got a that. great season, and yep. here we are, Steve, closing out the uh, the season at the Oakland Coliseum again. Who would have thought? Yep, and I got the Gonzaga family here today, Bobby and Frank, also known as the Beast. They came up. They're Jake, my son's uh, baseball coaches from Antioch High. Gutierrez, excuse me, hands off to Glasper, and yep. Glasper bangs ahead for about five. Not, not a bad... Uh, first down play you know that defensive line for Pittsburgh we've seen them a number of times this year and they're just phenomenal especially Robinson 6'2", 348 all-league performer Ron Shank 6'2", 336 who should have probably if he didn't make the first team made the second team yeah Rashawn Harris 6'5", 280 and also we want to mention Robert Crowley even though he's a smaller guy he doesn't get as much ink he, he does, does a great, a great job. job and you know right now you've seen early De La Salle's run right at him for five yards a couple times that's something we haven't seen all year nobody's read it the gut up the gut on these guys Straight ahead again. And this is just a big old rugby scrum. Oh, yeah. Kelly was the ball carrier. Fafidi was there. Saka Fafidi. Hey, you said it right. Well, because, I've, you know, I've been drinking them for so long, Saka Fafidis, and, you know, I finally... I, I, there's a drink now called Saka Fafidi. You know that? Hey, really? Yeah, there is. Okay. Third and about one. And I don't drink, but if I did, I'd have one. You just said you had a bunch, and then you said you don't drink. Well, I don't drink now. You mean, like, right now? No. I don't think at all. And that was just a quick snap to Gutierrez, and he bounces ahead for the first down. Yep, moves the chains. Steve De La Salle, this year, always always playing an interesting schedule. We'll take a look at it. Watch the hit right here. Oh, Saga yeah. Fafiti comes in and gives him a nice shot. They played Mitty, Palma, St. Francis Mountain View, Foothill, La Costa Canyon, Evangel Christian. Beat all the teams in the BVAL, beat Castro Valley, Monta Vista last week. They won that right. game 48-13. So they play a very interesting schedule because they're independent. They and don't, there it is again. Another sneak. Yeah. And, and ahead for about, about you know, five This is going to be an interesting game, Steve. Maybe they figure that they can't even, it's so wet they can barely hand the ball off. Well, Dan, I, I, you know, it's just you're not, you're, you're not going to get a lot done. Here it is right here. Well, they're leaving I, a big gap. Yeah, too. and I think he read that. And Fafiti and uh, Felice are in on there and everybody else. 
is a rugby, rugby scrum. Yeah, that's it's good. A, that's a good call. It's a big rugby scrum out there today. Mm -hmm. Second and four after a gain of six by Gutierrez. And this is Kelly. Mm -hmm. And Fafidi is there to make the tackle. It's going to be very right. close to a first down. Oh, that's going to move the chains. Yep, they're moving it. And Blanche was in on that, and Fafidi and Robinson, and you know, it's just. We talked about De La Salle's schedule. Pittsburgh started with a great game that we broadcast mm -hmm. against Miramonte 23-21, beat Hercules. Tied Logan, that was the tie back in there, Steve. Right. And then uh, went straight through the league uh, undefeated. The only loss this year for Pittsburgh was to De La Salle, 26 to nothing to De La Salle exactly. at home. In that game, they only gained 54 yards. They had one first down, but they played with a third-string quarterback. Mm -hmm. It was the week after Sino got hurt. That's right. And the rain is kind of, now it's just a drizzle, but it's the drizzle. field is already uh, yeah. pretty much uh, toast. Milk toast, because it's wet. Gutierrez fakes an inside screen. Throws a screen, other side there to Kelly. Is. He has three blockers out front. Nice play, though. Yeah. Instead of being a 40 or 50-yard gain, that one was stopped. I believe that was Blanche. And Robinson was in on it, number two. But uh, they set this up perfectly, Dan. Yeah, this is uh, just well executed right here. Let's see if we can see on the on the, the replay. It was it was a a, a nice gain on is the it, screen, but usually this is the kind of play they run for a touchdown. Yes, it is. But it was set up real nice. And Coleman right here makes some nice cuts, and you know they move the chains. Is it Gutierrez or Gutierrez? Gutierrez. Then? Gutierrez, thank you very much. Now, was his brother the quarterback? Yes, okay, yes well, Matt Gutierrez okay, now at the University good. Okay, of well, Michigan. then I know it's Gutierrez. Okay, you always got to ask that because it's he's outside the border. And he's just a junior. He's the only junior starter on the offense. Gutierrez to throw. They set up the same play, fake one way, going long. But and this, this is just, up. yeah, this is ugly. And, you know, I think this is what's going to happen here. They're just going to let him play? Yeah, let him play because... They were all running around and right. kind of jumbled up, and Stroud was the intended receiver. Right. Down there in coverage for Pittsburgh was Foster Gorey. Let's watch it again. Okay. And here's Gutierrez. Foster Gorey, Joseph Black. Plenty of time. Kind of doesn't, you know, and it slips out. You know, probably doesn't get the best throw. Kind of hangs up a little bit there and uh, gives the defender guy time to adjust. And, uh, boy, you know, it's just. Looks like Water World out there. Yeah. Water World USA. But that's a good call on first down. Oh, yeah. Second and ten. Two wide receivers near sideline. Nice kick out block. Oh, yeah, what that a was nice a great kick block. Out block. This is Kelly, and Kelly has a first down. Kelly's at the 40. He's at the 30. Yeah. Inside the 30. Knocked out of bounds by number 17, Joseph Blackman. But another first down and the biggest play of the ball game for the Spartans. Yeah, we're going to have to look at that, Dan. Baylau, I think, on the over there, and Biller, and... Fujimoto, Willoughby, they all did a great job on the line right there. There's a great kick out block right there that concealed the outside. And boy, Kelly right here, he's just off to the races right there. There's some real estate right there. Good job. Moves the chains. They're in business. Good job, our camera. Yeah. 20 yard gain, first down, De La Salle. We don't have a stack guy tonight, Dave Jackson, no. otherwise occupied, so we'll try to do the best we can with spotting the distance for you. This is Glasper, and he runs into Crowley. Yeah, and, Crowley, and real good job. It. Yeah, he just, uh, he said enough of this nonsense. He ain't going nowhere. Loss of about three on the play. Mm -hmm. We'll call it loss of two, second and 12. Okay. You can see Willie Glasper. Right? Willie Glasper, uh, no, excuse me, it's Jackie Bates that's going to Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, Jackie Bates going to Oregon. But I would assume that Glasper and Bates and Colvin and Hanks and Kelly and Gutierrez eventually. Yeah, look at, those guys aren't dirty yet, Steve. They want to get dirty, though. <laughs> There's, there's a number of players that yeah. are going to be D1 uh, players for De La Salle. And we have a list of some of the college players and pro players that have come through this, so we'll take care of that in the second quarter. There's a whistle on the field. I think they're going to restart the play clock. They didn't like that call. Okay. Over the last five years, Steve, D uh, Pittsburgh really hasn't been in many ball games against De La Salle. 61-14 and 99-37-14, 42-14, 65-6. This year, they're only 26-0. And uh, they felt good about that game, even though they lost. And that's right. why Coach Galley said he, he thinks he you know, feels good about tonight. They might have a chance. A little swing pass to Colvin. And Colvin. Nice straight yep, Blackman takes him out of bounds. Yep. Oh, uh, yep. you, know, you know. Well, you know what? Uh, he, that's he, ridiculous. Well, I'm he, sorry. Well, you know what, though? He took a shot at him. You're going to see the replay right here. He took a shot at him. 
out of bounds. And you know what? You got to hold your cool right here. This is going to go against Pittsburgh. You're going to get a personal foul. It's going to move them out. You know, let's let's watch this right here, Dan. Well executed play right here. One step drop. Throw out here to the flat. Let's watch this straight arm right here. And you get frustrated as a player right here because. Uh, but let's watch this right here. It's not there. This is it right here. That's where you're going to get it. You know, he don't got to do that. I mean, I mean, I know it's, yeah, it's, but it's cheap. That's not worth 15 yards. No, Jimmy. but you know what? You got to hold your composure. And you know what? In high school ball, you never know what these refs are going to do. And that's the kind well, of thing that, that, you see, can't do that's the it. problem. Well, that's the problem. Well, that, there you go. That's the problem. Well, okay. One guy will let it go, and the next guy will call it. Well, then you shouldn't do it, just to be safe. That takes the ball to the 16-yard line. First down, De La Salle, threatening with 3.38 to go in the first quarter. No score. And that in itself is a surprise, Steve. Well, the quarter's not over. Well, yeah. And the rain has stopped, Dan. Yes, it has. It has blown through. It's still drizzling. Yeah, I don't see nothing. It's drizzling on that side of the, on the right side okay. of the stadium, not on the left side of the stadium. That might be the but right. They're playing on the right side of the stadium right now. That so. may be the right side of your brain, thinking that it's raining, and the left side says it's not. You never know. Dan, tell me some poor players who've come through here. Ooh. Well, well, uh, the, the most I know notable is uh, ahead, Amani Toomer, okay. who is with the New York Giants. All pro wide receiver. Aaron Taylor, who played for the Green Bay Packers and San Diego Got Chargers. Got a Super Bowl ring with Currently, the Packers. Currently, Dave Laverne uh, with the St. Louis Rams yes. and Doug Bryan, the kicker for the New York Jets. Jets, yes. So they, they play, went to De La Salle High School. Pittsburgh's also got some players, including okay. Ken Simonton, Shenard Hartz, and Joe Tafoya playing pro football. There's Crowley. Real good job right there. That was a good job by Crowley. Yeah. That was Kelly. Right up the middle. Maybe picked up one at the most, maybe two. We'll call it a gain of two, second and eight. Yeah. Ball on the 14. Look at that, Dan. We got everything right here to the left of us. Yeah. It's so going to tell us it's second and eight. Ball on the 12. For two dummies like us, it's it's amazing what you can get when you come to the big place, right? I can't believe I found the Coliseum. Well, I think the directions were go down 880 and the place with the lights on. Right. Gutierrez play action. Pittsburgh blitzes. They throw. Touchdown. Nice. Colvin was wide open. He beat Blackman. 12-yard touchdown reception. Colvin from Gutierrez. And it's 6-0 with 2.54 to go first Dan, quarter. What a great throw by Gutierrez right there. You couldn't have put that in this kind of conditions, what they're going against. Beautiful throw. And look, folks, that's what they're playing in. Okay, everybody's on the underhang right there. Right there, that picture looks nice. But the other picture really shows you that what they're up against. But what a great throw. We'll have to look at that replay, Dan. That was beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, Dan, when you execute like that. Gio on. The kick is up. Oh, did he get it? He missed it. Oh, I thought it. Yep. Six to nothing. De La Salle over Pittsburgh here. Let's take another look at the touchdown, Steve. Well, Dan, you're going to like this a whole lot because he shows poise and character right here. Let's watch it right here. Gutierrez right in the pocket. Gets good protection. That's where it begins. Look at this throw. Look at the floor. Now watch this. Real nice catch by Colvin right there. Yep. Here's another angle right there. Play action fake. Everybody gets picked up. There's a block by Felice. Look at this throw. Yeah. Beautiful. You, you got to like that. Colvin, of course, uh, one of the top prospects in the entire country. One of the top wide receivers. A 4-4 four, four, uh, runner or 4-3 runner. He's, uh, you know, amazing speed. He's just, he's just really quick. <laughs> How fast is he? They're real fast. That's real fast. Yeah, that's yeah, fast. That's, that's fast. Good. And, of course, he missed the first five games due to uh, yeah. uh, academic ineligibility, but he came back and uh, has had a great season so far. This team, though, is so loaded. They you know, they lose a running back like Bates, and they put Kelly back there, who's a linebacker, and then he goes crazy for two or three games. And they give the ball to Hanks, and they give the ball to Kelly, and they give the ball to Glasper. And they're just so loaded, Steve. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, well, you know, Dan, the thing about it is there are a bunch of kids who uh, really almost every year Coach Ladd has got a bunch of overachievers, kids who just dedicate themselves to the season. They start lifting weights in January and, you know, it's just a crazy kind of phenomenon going on there. And, I, you know, I, I'm tired of trying to figure it out. I, I know Coach Ladd is probably sick of it. He's probably going to be glad when uh, he loses. I don't know. It's just a crazy thing over there. But, uh, you know, it's just... I think they get a lot of uh, unjust criticism. I, th I think you need to, you know, because of us, we've been doing this for a few years. You got to understand the program. You got to understand what it's really consists of before you can comment on it, or, or even really put a judgment on it. Okay, a lot of people just know that they've won that many. They get a lot of ink. They got this coach who probably thinks he's a maniac who just cares about winning. They ain't got the foggiest of what's going on over there. And you know what? Oh well, you know, probably Coach Ladd, if you ask him, you think you're going to win, he'd probably say, I don't care. 
you know, that, you know, people, what? I don't care. You know, I'm just, you know, I'll just try to get the most of my kids, and we'll see what happens. You know? Gio to kick. Don Smith and Jelani Killings are deep for Pittsburgh. And the ball dies right about the 23-yard uh, line. This is Smith. He's nice angle outside. He's at the 35. And he's yeah, blown, the, yeah, the play's blown dead at the 39. Glasper knocked him out of bounds there. Pittsburgh will take over trying to even this one up or take a one-point lead if they were to score. Steve, they're yep. down 6 to nothing, 249 to go in the first quarter. Yep. Let's watch a replay right here. And every time something like this happens, something funny happens on the kickoff because everybody kind of pauses. And, and then right there, that's what happens. And Real nice. It looked like number 16 there. Yeah, how come that wasn't called? Well, Dan, because the kid kept running, maybe didn't hear the whistle, could have called. But, you know, I'm telling you, it's high school routes. You know, they're going to do what they're going to do. Number 16, Dan, who is that over there on that's? That was the uh, kicker. That's Gio. Gio. Jonathan Gio. Good job by Jonathan. Look at this. Oh, Look at geez. this. Number 51, Chris Biller, was in the backfield before Corral handed the ball. I think he was in the Pittsburgh uh, huddle. I think he knew what was going before it even happened. That's how quick he got back there. Wow, that's just called, uh, let's watch the replay. Watch this uh, anticipation. Look at this right here. Oh, you oh. ain't going to block me. Well, Look at he I'll tackle block. you and you, and I I'd get the ball if you get it. What a great play right there. Fafidi missed a block there, and Robinson was hit before he even had the ball, mm -hmm. and they're lucky they got Chris it back. Chris Biller. Chris yep. Biller. What a great job by him. 5'11", 175-pound senior. Four-yard loss, second and 14, Pittsburgh at the 35-yard line, and it's raining again. Corral to throw. Got Rowan time. Has some time. Looks and throws. Has a receiver. This is Davis. First yep. down Pittsburgh. Across the 50. Marked at the 47-yard line of the Spartans. That was pretty. This kid Corral, you know, Steve, he didn't even, he wasn't even eligible for eight games. He came out of nowhere and look at him starting at the Oakland Coliseum his last yep. game as a senior. And, and watch the pressure right here. If we get Alan Torrey's big head out of the way, we'll be able to see it. But right there at the end, he just gets slammed. Real nice catch right in the middle of the field. There's Hanks. Cleaned up the mess. Coach Galley told us to give Alatore a little love, so that was his love for the. That was his love, Alan Al Alatore. I seen him the other day at the uh, dentist's office. First He's down, Pittsburgh. Their first of the ball game. Corral takes a snap. Oh, look at this. really low, and that's a fumble. That's a turnover. That's a rain turnover right yep. there, Steve. Well, that's the kind of stuff you just can't do. And right Pittori there. falls on the ball, and Delasau gets it. You can't do that against these no. guys. You can't help them. You do that two or three times, you might as well just go. Well, they've already helped them once with the right. personal foul. Right. And now you fumble. And Let's yeah. watch a replay right here. There's a pitch. He just doesn't get. He doesn't get it. Kind of a high pitch. And it's almost like you need to take those kind of plays out of the playbook. That's right. And number 52, Mike Vittori. You know, that pitch stuff just doesn't work. You got to keep a back end and the tight end in the block when the weather's like this. You almost have to change your entire. Uh, you have to use the plays you know, but you've got to limit your playbook. Tila Sal doesn't do it. Well, they, I'm sure they're, they're you know, I what? haven't seen him pitch. <laughs> Play action. <laughs> Gutierrez through up top. Colvin's wide open. Makes the catch inside the. I believe it's inside the 20. Yeah, there's yep. someone standing at the yard marker. It's at the 18 yard line. First down, Tila Sal. And then you can start to feel a little bit of the dam starting to crack a little bit. Just a little bit. Gutierrez in the pocket. Look at the time. He reads gone with a win. <laughs> then he throws it. Look at this. Look at the separation. Just a nice route. First down. That's Glasper in motion. Hand off to Kelly. Flag on the play. Two flags come out mm -hmm. on the play. Short gain on that play. You're going to get some motion on, uh, I think, you're going to get some motion on De La Salle. They're going to send him back five. Let's see what we got. Let's see how good I'm doing tonight. Yes, it's an illegal shift yeah. on De La Salle. Yeah, I thought so that's they had some kind of movement before the ball was snapped. That's going to set him back. A minute 17 to go here in the first quarter. Of course, Steve, the uh, great game in 91, as you see, uh, and Coach Aliotti was a He's, part of that staff or yes, was, was at Pittsburgh High School at that time. There's uh, a lot of ties between these two schools. There yeah. really is. And, you know, it's well, just... Coach Galley went to De La Salle and it coached at De La Salle. Well, so... you know, the, the, what I always tell everybody, there's a little bit of De La Salle in everybody. Because, really? well, because you got guys from Antioch going there, a few guys from Pitt, a few guys from, you know, I mean, you know, there's, there, you, know, you know, there's... They're not all from Conquer. I mean, there is, and everybody goes, oh, yeah, well, they recruit. Ah, whatever. I don't know. Tell me what kid in any school district at every school is all is within the boundaries now. 
It's just a crazy thing. People are going out of boundaries. You got inner city kids coming in. So I don't know. First I don't, I don't really care. Gutierrez to throw over the middle. Nice play yep. by Robinson. Real nice play. Could have had it picked. Glasper came out of the backfield. Yep. Robinson uh, came over from his safety spot and knocked the ball away. Yep. He'll bring up second and 15 with a minute to play in the first quarter. Yeah, real nice reaction on his part. Gutierrez, he's getting time down. That could be really, look at this throw, just a little bit behind. And uh, Glasper was making an adjustment on the route to get to the ball. If he leads him a little bit, there's six more right there. And it's amazing when you consider that yep. the offensive line for De La Salle, Steve, go 225, 235, 210, 175, and 217 against 205, 348, 336, and 280. And they're keeping them off the quarterback. Well, I mean, you know, that's just that's the way they do it there. It's all technique and all dedication. Gutierrez play action again. Crowley comes inside. They throw a screen pass to Look Kelly. At Kelly's at the 10. Kelly's still on his feet. That's a touchdown. Touchdown, De La Salle. Yep. It looked like he might have went out of bounds on the far sideline. They didn't call it. 23-yard touchdown on the screen pass. And just like that, Steve, in the last two minutes, they've scored 12 points. It's 12-0, De La Salle. That's what I said. The quarter ain't over yet. It was like, you know, and uh, that's just what they did. 2.54 to go. So it's in the last 2.02, they've scored uh, two touchdowns. And they're, two. Probably, they're probably going to go for two here. They're talking about it on the sidelines. I'd say they're probably going to go for two. They better take a timeout if they're going to do it because with 52 seconds left, you still got a timeout left. This should be an interesting call here. Seems like they've had a lot of time to uh, bring yes, this play have. in. Mm -hmm. One back. Danny Latticer is a split right for De La Salle. Play action, Gutierrez with the two-point conversion. They throw to Glasper and he drops it. So it's 12 to nothing after the failed conversion. Mm -hmm. Let's take another look at the touchdown, Steve. Maybe we might pick up a block here that, uh, that sprung well, Kelly I, down the sideline. I'll tell you what you do. You just look at good execution right here. And, you know, that's what De La Salle does so good. They they always play to your, you know, to your weaknesses right here. They know they're a big, aggressive line. Look at him release. Look at that. This is set up. Crawley, he's going for the quarterback. Natural reaction. And here's Kelly. Real nice hands. you got to catch it first, folks. He does that. We can't see. A guy comes in and tries to take his legs out from under him and misses. And that just... Uh, he didn't really need any blocking. Commitment to excellence. Isn't that a nice place for a, a De La Salle guy to be right there? Well, a couple of them. Yeah, probably because that uh, pertains a lot more than to the pro team that plays here right now. Yeah, okay. I, and send That's all my your, point. Send all your cards and letters to Steve Sanchez. That's fine. That's my point. I just thought it was kind of funny. He had a commitment to excellence and about four De La Salles after a touchdown. It's kind of... Pittsburgh has scored 145 points in their last three games in the uh, playoff uh, games and going back to the Antioch game. And, of course, Robinson's run for 664 yards. But... Uh, the way this is one's going tonight, Steve, they're going to have to do something, I think, on one of these next couple of drives. This isn't like last night where you can come back on a team, you know, the no. Clayton Valley, Los Lomas type of game, even you, though both those defenses played well. Do you know, Dan, a stat that I'm going to throw on you, I bet you don't know? In all of their games in the whole streak, they've only trailed? Like by, for a minute or something like that. One time. Yeah. And you know who that was this year? Three to nothing. To the to, team to, from to Christian. Yep. I thought they were behind in one of the modern day games. Okay, I, maybe I'm wrong. Nope. The ball rolls right to the one yard line, and Cliff yeah. was in the end zone, so they're going to have to start at the 20. And well, he, Steve, they've only given up 5.4 points a game, and one of the things they point out is that a lot of the points are given up with the second and third second stringers in. Additional friends of the program, Diablo View Florist Image is a three-hair salon, the Quilting Queens Matchmaker Restaurant, No Name Pizza, Jim's Auto Body, State Farm Insurance, Charter Funding Incorporated, Mary Marie Salon, Rock Bottom Records, Antioch Opticians, Burke and Keller, Doctors of Dentistry. How about this? Here's a Dan Wallstack. Go ahead, Dan. Also, Dr. Hogue on uh, 5201 Deer Valley Road, Suite 3 in Antioch. Not yet. Okay, <laughs> let me know when I can. Now you can. Okay. Coach Latticer yep. has got more North Coast sex of titles than losses in his career. <laughs> How's that? Do you like that? That's a good stat, Steve. Okay, thank you. Crowley in motion. Play action, Corral. Going deep. Throws one up, jump ball for Clift. And Clift has to play defender that yep. time as Glasper and Colvin were in coverage. That pass is incomplete. I think it's going to be really hard to... Uh, Look at that. Look what they're playing. Go yeah, ahead, Dan. I didn't want to interrupt just, your thought. Go ahead. It's going to be very hard to complete that kind of pass in this yep. weather. Well, you know, here it is right here, Corral. And you know what? You can have nothing but respect for him and the way he's come on. And uh, yeah, Dan, I, I agree. Look what it's coming through. 
actually a good job by Cliff by going playing defender all of a sudden because that could have been a that could have been another one by Glasper and uh, with the first quarter and 44 seconds left the last thing he wants a, another score would to have uh, three of them in the last two minutes because then you're really 44 seconds to go first quarter 12 nothing De La Salle from the Oakland Coliseum the Network Associates Coliseum mm -hmm. this is Blackman who didn't start and I thought was injured but is now playing and that goes nowhere nope so it's going to be third down third and ten and I uh, think they might get one more playoff down we apologize for the static or anything you're hearing folks uh, on your set it's a uh, like I said, we're flying by the seat of our pants here tonight. It's really quite amazing that it's a tribute to Matt Bolander, and there's uh, Vince, you know? Yeah, we even got it on. Congratulations, buddy, on the year you had. And the we Korea. found out yesterday that we could do this yeah, game today. Yeah, and I mean, he comes out here in a, yeah, in, uh, a hurricane and gets it done. Last play of the first quarter, third and 10. Corral rolling. Rolling. Rolling, rolling on rolling. the river, and it is a river out there right now. Rolling, and he's play. running. Yeah, he's going to get it, too. And I think he's got oh. the first down, and he is upended. And uh, I hope he's okay. He jumps right up. What a great job. I think that was Kelly who made the tackle, but a first down for Pittsburgh on the final play of the first quarter. We'll try to save that one for you, Steve, and take another okay. look at, at it will. when we come back. Oh, we're going to take a look. Are you going to do it, or are we going to stay here? We're staying right. here now. Let's right. watch the replay right here. And here's Corral. He just tried to buy him some time. A little a lost Steve Young. And right here, he just says, I'll fake it and run. And then he tucks it in, and, and watch this hit. And, woo, Watson was in on it. Kelly was in on it. A new water sport. A new water sport. There it is. End of the first quarter, 12 nothing. De La Salle. We'll be back with the second quarter after this on Comcast. At Mazay, we believe in giving our customers the best selection, service, and savings. How do we do it? Dedication and teamwork. You receive one-on-one -on -one personalized service when selecting your next newer used vehicle. We won't drop the ball. Good credit, back credit, no credit. We'll design a finance package that makes you a winner. And a full service shop is dedicated to keeping you on the road safely and in the game. Touchdown, Come be a part of our winning team. Mazay Pontiac Cadillac, Buick, GMC Trucks, the winning team in Antioch. Great Mexican food, home of the famous margarita, and fun and food in a festive environment. That's Celia's of Antioch. For over 30 years, Celia's has served specialties like fajita supreme, camarones a la ranchera, and other great Mexican food that has brought people from around the area to eat. Every Thursday night is live music from Trio and Saturday night mariachis. That's Celia's of Antioch for great Mexican food. season this year. They tied Logan earlier in the year, came back to beat him in the playoffs, beat a very good Foothill team by 48 points, a team that came in with 10 wins. Now the Pirates come in with 10 wins, guys, and only one blemish, of course, on their record, and that was to, uh, let me see, you guessed it, De La Salle. Guys, let's go back upstairs. First down, handoff to a, a new running back that time, number mm -hmm. 17 in the game, Joseph Blackman. Usually we see him on defense, and he picks up about three. He'll be second and seven. Chris Biller on the tackle down. Hey, Dan, I want to comment last night on the uh, Clayton Valley Los Lomas game. Mortensen, what a great guy, uh, player that guy is. And he's related to Matt. And I know Matt's sister was there. I want Matt to think back 18 years ago, probably his age, 17, 18, was your sister ever alone with Ray Nisky <laughs> or Dick Butkus for any, like, period of time? Or, 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 they, or, or, or uh, what's his name? Jack Lambert. Jack Lambert. Or, what, the, I, I mean, I mean, I just want to, you know, I started thinking about that last night, and I go, think about it, man. I mean, well, was he ever in, like, Wisconsin when Nisky <laughs> was playing? Or Butkus? Was she, was she in the window, Windy City? Chicago. But I no, don't know. No, he, th th that was a great game last night for any wow. of you that uh, last week saw that. You had Brendan Swisher uh, on the one side put, put in a great effort, and Mortensen. All the players should be commended, the coaching staff. Oh, it was and, awesome. And, and uh, as, as I told uh, Coach Longero the other night, yeah. I don't think I can really give you the nickname he penned for himself, but it just had to do with something. He said he, he had a nice set of grapefruits, is okay. what he said there okay. on that last play. Okay. You can oh, use yeah. that on a, on a family channel. The Riverboat Gambler, Look Coach at this. Longero. Look at this. That went nowhere. Biller. Biller's having a big first half. That was Blackman again. I wonder if there's something wrong with Robinson. I don't know. But uh, let's watch Let's watch big number 51 finish right, right here, Dan. Watch this. He gets the ball. Look at this. Wow. Biller. Woo. That's how fumbles happen right there. Kelly was in on it. He mopped it up a little bit. There's Coach Bly going, wow, these guys are just quick. They're good. Yeah, Brian Robinson is on the sidelines right now being attended to. That's why Blackman's in the game. Yeah. 
So third and 15, the ball at the 29-yard line here. 10.33 to go second quarter. De La Salle by 12. Corral looks like he's almost down in a catcher stance mm -hmm. when he takes that. Look at this. this is Look, at Biller. Biller. Look at Biller. And he gets away, does a Houdini act, throws. The ball was wet. He throws it right to Crowley, and he drops it. Yep. That was almost like shot put, the way the ball was slipping yep. out of his hands. This is really some treacherous uh, field uh, out here right now, Steve, Whoop. with all the water and the, with the weather. Well, Dan, all the chaos and the madness in that play. Let's watch it right here. And right here, here's Biller. I don't know what he had for breakfast this morning, but obviously it has a lot of carbs in it and stuff. But right here, he gets away from him, and he makes it have, makes a pretty good throw, puts it on the numbers, and uh, he just can't, you know, complete it, can't finish the play. So now they got to punt. they got to give it back to the green mean machine. I thought it was the big green machine. I don't know, the mean green machine, whatever, the green machine, deal us out, whatever you want to call it. Terry to kick. Line drive. This is Colvin. And a good tackle this yep. time on special teams. Try to get that number for you at the bottom of the pile. Well, I can tell you right now, Dan, it's Brown, number 84. 84, they, thank you. Mm -hmm. I was trying to get the yard marker there, Steve. It's, I'll tell you what, folks, it's a lot. Dave Jackson, you always say Jackson knows what he's doing. He does know what he's doing. It's a hell of a thing trying to do without him. Comcast Game of the Week brought to you by great friends of the program, Delta RC Raceway and Hobby Shop in Antioch. Thank you, the Noax. Mellow's Heating and Air Conditioning. Bob and Mike Mellow, thank you. Lone Tree Golf Course. Pat Kane and Jack Oakley, thank you, guys. Italian's Italian Food. Doug and Martha, thank you. A&B Creative Trophies, downtown Antioch. Jack and Jeannie, thank Sounds you. Sounds of Pinewood Studio. Russell Lanier, thanks. Thanks to all you guys for helping this happen. We'll get the rest of them after this play. The ball's at the 45 of De La Salle. First down. Play action again by Gutierrez. He throws. This one's up for grabs. Colvin's running, and Colvin runs right under it, and the speed wow. takes him right into the end zone. 55 yards, touchdown. That looked like a jump ball when it left his it hands. It really did, And Dan. Colvin just ran right under it and took it right in for the touchdown. 18-0. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Dan. I don't want to take away from your play call. That was just beautiful throw. In this kind of element, what a beautiful... I mean, you, you don't expect to see these plays. That is what is so amazing. Dan, what we're seeing here is the best high school team in the world. That's what's happening right here, folks. It, it's unbelievable. Unless they got some in Taiwan, bunch of like guys running around <laughs> that we don't know about, that they've been practicing for 30 years, I don't know. But th this is pretty much the real deal right here. That and was an incredible pass. I mean, when it left his hands, it looked like it was, it was just going to be a jump ball when it got to him. And he, was, uh, he just ran under. And then when he caught it, the burst of speed took him right That's in the it. end zone. Kind of ran down her like Willie Mays in center field. You got it. You know? Dio on for the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. 9.54 to go second quarter. 19 to nothing. De La Salle. Let's take a look at the touchdown. And Dan, here you go right here. Let's watch Gut Gutierrez right here. He's in the pocket. He gets a little bit of pressure up the middle. Look at him standing in there. you got to love that. Now watch this, Dan. Watch him run under this. Oh, this is sweet. And right here, Dan, with this kind of weather, you know where he's going? Hot time. <laughs> He's gone. Meet you in the hot tub. Yeah. Here's a look from the high. You camera. know, they might have had a jump on that if you really look at that. Look like the, the tight end might have left a little early. But hey, what, whatever. But look at this again. You see, that How was sweet. How sweet. You know what, Steve? That was exactly what you said. He knows where he's going. They don't. Well, and there with, you the, go. with the, the footing, you, he was able to get there. It looked like Blackman was on him. He just couldn't get there once he made the cut. I'll give you an example on bad weather. Buffalo. Houston, 10 years ago, playoffs, snowing, 20 below, whatever, 48 to what, 44, whatever it was when they came from behind to beat it. 38, 35 or something like that. Yeah. Let's see if he jumps. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just, you know, I, I thought I'd seen that. You know what? They got away with one. So what? Big deal. All the good ones get away with them, you know? You ever notice that? That's the only problem, though, is, is that they don't yeah. need the help. No, they don't need the help. They jump, but you know what? What a beautiful play anyway. It was a beautiful play. There's no doubt about that. Look at that. That isn't pretty. Boy, if that guy walked into my house with my wife and the carpet, oh, that guy just might as well just get Johnny Cochran as an attorney. Short kick. Let it go. Let it go. And it let goes it go. out of bounds at the 20-yard line. There you go. There goes the Pittsburgh flag. Pittsburgh will uh, get good field position. You can see the... Uh, That's the, the biggest pitch. flag I've ever seen in my life from a ref. Like you it. see that? It's a big flag. That let, well, it looked like my blanket that I sleep in on my bed. That thing would... Go ahead, Dan. Barry Carcare in Danville, San Ramon, and Pleasanton for all your uh, 
car needs. needs. Yes, yeah. under new management, go see Roseberry Car Care at those locations. Alberto's Cantina, 435 uh, Main Street, downtown Pleasanton. Call 462 and the other four numbers yep. for reservations. Right. 19th Hole Casino in yeah. Antioch, Texas Hold'em, Super Action Blackjack, Low Ball, and many more. Yep, Eddie Bo... Uh, Eddie Bodine. Yes. I also want to thank the Monta Vista cheerleaders and the San Ramon Valley Booster Club for helping us get mm -hmm. games on this year. This yeah. is it, folks. We can't can't yep. come up with another no, game. No, we can't. I mean, last over. year we had the Battle of Danville. Yep. That was beautiful we here. here. What a way to end Sam Keller and Kyle Wright's careers. We got to do that. We were here for that one, and yep. now we're here tonight, and this is it. Our next uh, broadcast will come the first week of January. We'll be doing the West Coast Jamboree, Dave Jackson's mm -hmm. Girls Tournament. First yep. down, Corral, pressured. Throws a little swing pass. It's behind. I believe that's Blackman, and it They're is and it's incomplete. incomplete. And De La Salle's going, hey, he caught it. It's a loss of five. He caught that ball. But let's watch the replay right here. And look at these guys off the ball. And Biller, come on. Wow. The only sad thing I see in that picture right look there. Look at Joey Aliotti. I was trying to say, to say he caught seeing it. Joe Aliotti, yeah. who, who used to bleed orange and, and black, Root, uh, on the sideline in green. That's just kind of sad. It's like watching Joe Montana play for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a good analogy. Thank That's, you. That kind of made me sick, too. There's Coach Galley. There's Coach Galley. He's not feeling real well right yeah, now. Coach Galley uh, graduated in 83 from De La Salle. Coached the freshman at De La Salle 91. JV's 92-93. Was here at Pittsburgh with Pardee and then back at, with the JV program at De La Salle until he took over two years ago at Pittsburgh. Corral running for his life. Nice spin move nice out spin to the 35-yard line. Yep. Clock's going to continue to run. Real nice move. But when all said and done, they still got, what, a third and ten, second yeah. and ten? He barely made it back to the original yeah. line of scrimmage. You know, it looks real nice, on, you know, but because he's dropping 20, 20, you know, on yards. And then he's rolling out, and now he's just thinking about survival. <laughs> yes. And here's Biller again. This guy, he's, he must have been at Starbucks for about three hours before he got here. I think number 52 on that play for De La Salpatore just wanted to get dirty. Mm -hmm. Looked like he just dove into the in the, the mud. Mike uh, Dominguez, uh, 34, was in pursuit. They actually gave him a yard. It's third and nine. The ball at the 36-yard line of Pittsburgh. 8.53 to go in the first half. 19 to nothing, De La Salle. And the ball's on the ground, there and De La Salle go. has it again. And wow. Steve, this one, another touchdown, I think it's over. I mean, they just, they're, they're making way too many mistakes. Yeah. Just way too many. You can't, you know, if they're going to force a fumble or intercept a pass, then that's one thing. But they're just leaving the ball on the ground for De La Salle to pick it up. And here's let's, another example of it. And let's watch Kyle Bailo. Bailau. Bailau, I'm sorry, Bailau. Did I say Bailo? I'm sorry, I read it wrong. Bailau. There's a good job by him picking up the mess right there. Down in Tennessee, they say that looked like a pig going in slop, going to get his food. Yeah, that did. You know? But that's what I'm talking about. It's one thing to run into the line, get right. hit hard, nice hit. But both the fumbles have been Pittsburgh's mistakes. Legal substitution on De La Salle. And if they score here, Steve, I, I just, uh, you know, we always say Clay Callum, our good friend who's done some games for us, always tells me you have to score 35 points to beat De La Salle. And Pittsburgh, obviously, at this point right now, doesn't have any, so they have to 35 to go. And I just don't see him scoring 35 points against this team. No. But you know, Dan, the main thing is, you know, this was uh, the big uh, granddaddy of all the playoffs right here. It was a 4A, and uh, you got the top team in the nation playing, and hey, we're lucky we were able to come here and play it and then show it. And hey, the last time a team scored 35 was when Pittsburgh beat them in 91 mm -hmm. against De La Salle. And off to Kelly. Kelly, very patient, picking his way through. Yep. Gets a couple. Robinson's at the bottom of that pile along with Blanche. And also your buddy, Saka Fafidi. Fafidi. A Fafidi on the rocks. That's just Fafidi on the rocks. That was a, a gain of four, Dan. It's second and 11. Ball's on the 33. 824 and count in the second quarter. And uh, everything's all well in De La Salle land right now. Yeah, they won the cross-country championship. Yeah. They'll be a, a, a favorite in the BBL in uh, basketball, wrestling, baseball, tiddlywinks, and rugby. Okay. Not necessarily that order either. <laughs> no. Gutierrez hands off to Kelly again, behind Hanks, a great block, bounces outside, he's at the 25, he's at the 20. There comes he's two the flags. 10. Two flags. And there's a fight right here at the middle of the field right here. Man, that you was- got uh, Robinson and Robinson 54. Robinson and Drosbaugh were yep. going at it. 
There were flags coming on the line of scrimmage mm -hmm. after the play. We could have a, a lot of infractions actually here. We'll have to wait for the call. Well, you know, and it was way behind the play. It's a hold. And by the way, just so you know, folks, they're televising the game inside the Coliseum on Diamond Vision, and that's why Ken Leffel is pointing towards the uh, opposite sideline because that's that's where the cameras are. They're using their mics, they're using their cameras, and that's why he's away from us. So, okay. But it's a hold on De La Salle. It's going to bring that one back, and it's going to bring up a second and, and There's long. a Diamond Vision. Look at that Comcast sign underneath that. That's that's my home uh, TV's about that big in my bedroom. Okay, maybe my bedroom's big as a TV. I don't know. That's a pretty big TV. It is. Second and 15, the ball at the 38-yard line. De La Salle has scored 19 points in the last six minutes of play. And there's another penalty. And They're going to get a un, delay. Got to be a delay. -like. Yeah. No, there's still plenty of time. There has to be a procedure. Huh. Well, nobody was moving, so I thought that uh, maybe there was a delay. Okay, well, we we'll have some up. time, Steve. Uh, here's some of the players that have come through that are playing now in the college ranks. Maurice Drew last year is right. at UCLA. Drew, kid from Antioch. Demonte Fitzgerald's at Montana State. Anthony Binswagers at the University of California. John Chan and Cole Smith at the Naval Academy. Damon mm -hmm. Jenkins in the University of uh, Fresno State. Let's watch a false start, see if we get it on the replay here, Dan. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Hey. Look at that. The whole line went, maybe, I don't know, maybe there was something between the quarterback and center on that one. I think Matt's doing that in the truck, power of the truck. I think he's doing... And now there's things. a timeout on the field, which is perfect for us because we can uh, do a little business or talk a little bit more about the players that are in the NCAA. Uh, to buy a tape of this game, purchase your copy of this game, shipping courtesy of UPS included, call 933-6264. Ask for Metal Matt. Yep, the big brown machine to bring it right to your door. Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria, voted best pizza in the East Bay, Ignacio Valley Road, Oak Grove. Yep. One of yep. our great sponsors, been with us the entire time we've been yep. doing sports here. He's always there to help us. We want to thank Rocco. Helped us a lot tonight, and uh, he's really always been there for us, and we want to thank Rocco. Him and Matt Mazzea are our two big ones. Brandon Theaters in Concord of Pittsburgh. The Last Samurai just came out with Tom Cruise. You can see uh, Haunted Mansion. You can see yep. Elf still out there. That's right. Bad Santa. Tom Cruise, is that that real ugly guy? Yeah, he's, he, he's you're, an ugly you're, you're cuter than him. Oh, come on. Here's, okay, a, here's a few more, Steve. Uh, Eric Sandy, Colorado State University. Chris okay. Mulvaney. And these are all guys from the class of 2003. Some of the other names you might remember. Derek Landry's at Notre Dame. Andy Briner's at the University of California, Berkeley. Maga Terrace, the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. Some of my favorite guys, one guy I remembered that played here, Chris Simon at the University of Tennessee. He was a monster. Also, another guy that played here, DJ Williams, was a great player. He's at the University of uh, Miami. And Demetrius mm -hmm. Williams at the University of Oregon. There's some other names in there. We'll bring them to you and you know, throughout man, the game. That's just the kids who continue to football. You see all the kids who became doctors and lawyers and, and all these good things. Look at this throw. That's a jump ball. And it should have been picked off by Roderick Wyatt, but he tipped it away from Stroud, and the pass is incomplete. It'll be a third and very, very long. Now, Steve, we don't need, normally have locations here, but we can do some good ones on this next one. Okay. I'm going to let you think about it. Okay, let me think which way that is. I could, okay, go ahead. I got it. Here's the replay. Okay. Good play by uh, Wyatt okay. that time to tip it away. Steve, I'm going to say it's third and the Shark Tank, where I'd be tonight if okay. it wasn't for this game. Now, do okay. you have a, a preferred... I was going to say third in the Fremont Drag Strip, but I don't even know <laughs> if that's there anymore. I think they tore that I down they tore that in about down. 86. Cha-Cha Mo Downey, I think she ran that right off the old uh, charts. Third and 20 from the 44. Hand off to Kelly. And Kelly, oh, what a straight arm oh, by yeah. Kelly. Oh, boy. Kelly runs, he reminds me of Eric Dickerson. Runs kind of straight up, just pushed that defender away. Reminds me of Leroy Kelly. Leroy Kelly, hey, Cleveland Browns. His last name's Kelly? Terrence Kelly, Leroy, Leroy Kelly? Kelly? One was on a brown team, one's on a green one? Wow. You, 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 you threw me there. Oh, okay. Gain of about eight, fourth and 12. Fafiti hit him and uh, bounced off. Yeah. And he was brought down by Rashawn Harris on that play. Rashawn Harris, we haven't called Rashawn's name that much. Nope. Dan, uh, be careful right here. This, they may have something up their sleeve right here. They do. Uh-huh. Because well, the, I knew it because Gutierrez was lined up as the punter. Right. Fourth and 12. And then they, and then they, uh, yeah, there's just madness. That was yeah. a jailbreak. They, they centered the ball to Glasper. Yeah. Look at Edson. They're all going crazy. When they don't execute, they get chewed out. Yes. What are you guys doing? 
I don't think they get mad at him if the play doesn't work, but they definitely, the one thing you don't want to do at De La Salle is not execute the play. You can yeah. see, when I watch this here, this looks like a jailbreak. Yep. Here comes Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. The punt returner has to come up and play safety. Okay, you're thinking, what's going on here? And then he walks away like, okay. Well, he was still in motion, but you can have one guy in motion. That's what I thought. Unless there was someone else in motion we didn't see. Yeah, I don't know. Gio on the kick. Almost blocked. Short kick. And they let it roll, and it's going to die at the five. In the muck, in the mire. Right about where Rick Meyer might play next week. Yep. Or the and week right after. Right, he'll be going back to pass, too. <laughs> because they usually start from about the 10. Yep. 6-19 to go first half, 19 to nothing, De La Salle. Tell us what you think about this game or any of the things we bring you here on Comcast. We want to hear from you. Call 9336264. Ask for Metal Matt. What would you say about Metal Matt last night? He's not doing anything else, so you just give him a call? Well, you know, I mean, I'd like to have uh, 2020 investigate the guy. And you know who that is? That's Oren Cross. You know, you know who that is? It's Oren Cross. That is not, no, sir. That's Kiefer Sutherland's dad. No, it's Kiefer Sutherland. Is it Kiefer? And I wish you'd Kiefer. be the next victim on 24 after that remark. That's Oren Cross. Used to be the band leader at Pittsburgh. Really? Yes. Okay, fine. Corral, this is trouble. He's in the end zone. He gets away, throws to no one. And that could be, I think that. Uh, no, there ain't no ground here. Yeah, there, that, that could be. Look at the sideline. Get a, look at it. Look at this. Look at Aliotti and the coaching staff. There's no one over there. They have a point there. That was a Houdini act by Corral just to get out of that, but he threw the ball away just like last night in the end zone. Mm -hmm. It should have been a grounding. There's no one there. Let's watch a replay right here, Dan. And right here, it's just penetration. And there's that man, number 51 again. And 5-5 five, five was in on that too, Dan. Yeah, Kyle Bela. Yep, you got Chris Miller. Look, there's no orange there at all. The only thing orange in that picture is the, the, the yard mark. Look at Aliotti. <laughs> Is that animated right? Oh, you killing, you killing me over here. Come on, you killing me. Doing the Italian dance. Second and ten. Corral, little swing pass inside Look screen to Cliff, and they get maybe two. You see Aliotti over there doing that? You know what Lattisher is doing over there? Anybody got a finger, <laughs> Clipper? I got a hang. I got a hang now right here. Can anybody get a? Biller, look at the play Biller makes. Oh. He fights off two guys, then makes the tackle. Biller has just been. Really, very aggressive yes, in the first half, That's a very good uh, call. Very aggressive and uh, very effective. Not defective Effect like me. Effectively aggressive. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Next time you're on a fishing excursion. Pittsburgh's one of three on uh, third down conversions. And they need something to get out of this right here. Third and eight. They just need something positive to happen. Yeah. Corral in the end zone, rolling, 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 rolling. <laughs> Throws, tipped, nearly intercepted Parker by Hanks. Hanks. Parker and Hanks was in on it. Yep, David Cliff, the intended receiver, it's incomplete. 5-13 to go second quarter, and Pittsburgh's got a punt from their end zone. And here's a replay right here. Four-man rush. And boy, they just, you know, Dan, they're just so good at getting off the ball. Big number 52, Dan. Patori. Huh? Patori. Patori was in on it. Here's Biller. He's coming in late. There's Parker Hanks. All of those guys, all league type performance. Oh, yeah. Terry from deep in his end zone. Good punt. Nice punt. Out to the 48 yard line. This is Glasper. It's set up, too. It is set up. Yep, Glasper down the sidelines, trying to make a cut, and he's finally tackled inside the 30. Yep. Fafidi was there with number 22 for Pittsburgh. We haven't called his name and yet. And I didn't see his name on the He's roster. He's not on the roster. Yeah, because I was going to call him earlier number 22 and he With wasn't on the roster. Number so. 22, the mystery man. Mystery man. The question mark and the Mysterians. And here's the, here's the, we were talking about this earlier. There mm -hmm. you can see the scores and some right. of the scores they ran up uh, against the, especially against the BVL opponents. They right. had big games in that game against Antioch we brought you. We had Pittsburgh on uh, three times this season against Miramani, Clayton Valley, and Antioch, and they were all, uh, you know, interesting games. Yep. Even that Antioch game, there was a lot of good offensive uh, uh, type exciting plays in that game. They beat Logan, and then last week, I, when I heard they beat Foothill 55-7, to that kind of... Kind of opens a little yeah, bit, too. I'm on with like, you, Dan. Wow, what well, that's the what went saying. on there? Well, you got to realize Foothill, too. I think Sweeney realized this. There's a penalty flag on the play. The pass is completed to Glasper. There's another penalty uh, downfield. I think you're going to get a legal man downfield, Dan. 
for, uh, well, you could, because I see number 55. 55 was yeah. down there, yeah. I, I see Baylow down yeah. there, and there's one at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think you're going to get a legal man down, Phil. I always like coming over to the Coliseum, Dan. This is a lot of fun for us. And, uh, I've been here so many times, Steve. It's amazing. Yeah. Raider games. Oh, yeah. A's games, day on the greens. Now, right now, this is where you would have been on the stage okay. when Led Zeppelin played here in 1977. It's about where they built the stage uh -huh. in the old configuration. <laughs> yeah, we're talking music now. Right here, Dan, here it is right here. Guterres, even though there's a man downfield, good poise. There nice might, little I toss. Think there, there might have been something back here. In, in right here, you got 55 hold. right yeah, here. And he's downfield. Yeah. But I didn't. Have they sorted it out. Have you hear what the call was, Dan? I didn't hear it. I'm it sorry. might have been offsetting penalties. We can't hear the the in-house uh, mic. Well, it is first and back, ten. You're back at the line of scrimmage. Okay, so we got offsetting because it's first and ten. So that was just uh, that play never happened. Wipe that from your memory. Didn't happen, Dan. Like that night we spent in San Francisco back in '82. I know there's about 15 people who can tell you it did happen. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we won't admit to it. Another penalty flag. It's the uh, United Nations of football. Okay, here right you know what? You know, Steve, it's almost, it's uh, just sad that you had to play in this sort of condition. Well, you know what, Dan, though? I, the you, rain you, you strap and them up, and, 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 and you give what God gives you. That's just oh, the way that, it is. That's the way I look at it. You know what? You can sit here and talk about the elements and talk about this and talk about that, but you know what? There's no excuse. You come out and play, you, you, you strap them up, and whatever happens, happens. You know? I mean, what's going to happen? If De La Salle beats him, they're going to say, well, you know, the weather, it didn't, if we weren't good in the weather. And then if Pitt beats De La Salle, going to say, the weather, you know, that played a part. So the weather's the weather. Whether, you like, whether you like it or not. Thank you. Thank you. First and 15 from the 34. Gutierrez hands off to Kelly. And I'll tell you, Kelly just has these cat-like yep. moves. Yep. Beautiful run that time. Picks his, he picks his way through, and then he sees that hole and just makes a burst. A gain of 12. It's going to bring up second and three. Four minutes to play here in the second quarter. Let's watch a replay right here. Here's the line. Look at him moving big number 93. It's a nice spin move. A law Chuck Foreman. Remember Chuck Foreman? 1977. Number, number Speaking of Zeppelin there. 77. Minnesota, Raiders. Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota yeah. Vikings. They were in Pasadena, Dan. Yes, they were. Where Freddie Belitnikoff got the MVP. <laughs> that was the Raiders' first Super Bowl. And old record. man Willie. Who could forget it? Glasper, the snap was bobbled, but Glasper runs over Crowley. Now, excuse me, that's Felice. And Felice is down. I don't know, he might be hurt on the play. We have a whistle. Yep. Yeah, they're going to call it right there. He's... Felice got hit by uh, by Glasper as he went through the line. The one good thing you like seeing is his leg going up and down right there because that means that means you know that he's conscious and that you know. Right there. Right there. Could it be a Hel stinger right helmet there. Helmet to helmet, it's a stinger. Want to wish a Christian Escher. Yeah, that's our right. Best yeah, well, hope Lost things Lomas are going fine school. for him. Hope you're okay. That was a very scary. Chris moment. Heard. Chris All the Heard. kids that we've seen uh, yeah, this year that got hurt. You know, you, you know when. When you analyze everything, you know there's a bunch of kids out here playing ball, and you know they're our future, and uh, we got to protect them. And uh, you know, no, no, no matter what team you like, what school you went to, what all of them played for, when you see a kid go down, you think about their parents, and you you know that they're worried to death, and you just hope everything's fine. Here's Coach Abono, and while we have an opportunity while they tend to this, let's say hello to some of the Pittsburgh coaches, and we'll also do this for De La Salle. They deserve a lot of credit sure getting they their do. team. They here. all do. All these guys do. Coach Galley, who's also the offensive coordinator. Jimmy Scheip, who looks like Jeff Bridges. Yeah. He almost looks more like Jeff Bridges than Jeff Bridges. Yeah, he really like does, Jeff and Bridges. he's a great guy, Jimmy Scheip. Yeah, I like Jimmy Scheip, and of course, the Scheip family. Oh, well, they, they the got line. great history. Yeah, they're, they're all great people. Chris Scheip was the quarterback yep. that beat De La Salle here in uh, 1991. See, I know that brain would kick in for you. I knew that. Sean Beals uh, out of uh, Pittsburgh, also Idaho, Idaho State, played in the NFL and the CFL. Yes, what did. team in the NFL did he play for? Philadelphia Eagles. What team in the CFL did he play for? Uh, Canada. Cal the Calgary Stampeders. Okay, well, thank you, because I don't care what happens north of the border. They remind me of, like, somebody looking over a loft going, will you guys hold it down over there? <laughs> what's, what's with them guys in Canada? Yeah, we'll battle of the bands, Dan. That Pitts, pitcher might have a chance there because their their battle their band is one of the best around. Oh, you got that. Billy Gay is the coach over there with John Abono, Ryan Brinkley, Mike Orlando, Mike Masseri. Aaron Alatori, our good buddy, is a, they right. see Felice coming off the field, and, and that's and, good news. And Bly's a great guy. 
Yep. Yep. Billy Bly's a great guy. And so is John Abono. Billy Gay. Billy, I call him, you know what? Why first do you I call him Billy I don't Bly. know, but he's a big guy and he's a strong well, fellow. That's why I'd, I'd get his name right. You think so? <laughs> How about if I just call him Sir? <laughs> that would that would do it. <laughs> Felice is coming over How to the How do you spell bench. his last name? Uh, G A Y. I ain't calling nobody that big gay. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I'll call him Mr. Bill. Now, this is a alignment for you. They had four linemen lined up, and there's, I think it's an illegal formation because they there's a penalty flag. They had four of their linemen lined up to the left of the center. Long as you're on the line of scrimmage. Well, yeah, just like last night, that circus Long play. Long Gerald showed us out. That's right. He, they called it the circus play. And, and let me just say this, okay? Doug Long Gerald just gained so much respect for me last night. I knew he was a great coach, but he pulled the rabbit out of his hat last night, that guy. I mean, I don't care what nobody says. This is what See, you look at four linemen to the left. Okay. And two over here. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven linemen. Okay. I, oh, he wasn't set. That's, oh, that's the one was. lineman was yeah, up. 54 wasn't yeah. set. That was, uh, yeah, I, I that think was uh, Drosbaugh, who is not a starter. He was in in this right. formation. I think as long as you're on the line of scrimmage, you can put, do anything you want, really. Yeah, you can have any seven guys on the line of All scrimmage. Right. As long as ain't me and you out there. Uh, Steve, I'd be dead already if I'd even warmed up. Third and seven, Gutierrez to throw. Has plenty of time. Throws back for Hanks. First down. Inside the 10, still on his uh, feet. Yeah. Knocked out of bounds at the five by Davis. And that was just, you know, the thing is that it, they're keeping these big guys out of there. They're, oh, yeah. they're not getting to Gutierrez. That's what's a replay right here. This is just called execution. Well, look at this. There's two oh, guys on him. Well, that's smart. He's a big guy. There's two, this guy's look at this throw. Harris wide. Look at this pass to Hanks. And, folks, I'll tell you what. The thing about it is, Gutierrez will be in the weight room next month, starting next for the might be in the weight room tomorrow. On the way home, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that <laughs> tonight. Kid, he, he's Anthony's going to be a great one. I really like his poise as a junior, and uh, he's going to be a good one. Hand off to Glasper. And Glasper runs right into Robinson, and then Robinson uh, does something that uh, I think is legal only in the WWE. Mm-hmm. Short gain. Well, you know, none of us that, that saw it will ever forget when his brother Matt made his debut. Here's right. a replay, real quick, Steve. Yep. And right there, this is look at him right here. And once he gets a hold of you, he's, you know, I, I think Willie Gosper did just a great job just getting a yard out of that. In that first game that Gutierrez ever played against Modern Day up in Stockton, had okay. six touchdowns and 300 yards as a sophomore. Who's that? That was his brother. Oh yeah, that's right. So and then he, of course, of course, uh, Anthony. What's that? You got a thought, Dan? Well, I was saying Anthony uh, Gutierrez had to come in in that TV game against Evangel on ESPN. We're going to send it down to Tony with an update. Well, we want to thank Tony for that report. I think Tony's mic has, uh, has met its match down there on the sidelines. Too much water to, tonight, folks. Hand off to Kelly, and Kelly's in for a touchdown. Four-yard run, touchdown, De La Salle, 147 to go, second quarter, 25 to nothing here for the Spartans. And Steve here, as you mentioned, with two minutes and 54 seconds to go in the first quarter, there was no score. And here over the last course of the last 13 minutes, they've scored four times. Yep. And you know, it's kind of just like... Those are the uh, Carondelet girls that okay. go to Carondelet across the street that are and, De La Salle And, and they look like they're well prepared for the uh, elements. Well, you know, Steve, the big question is, uh, unless Pittsburgh pulls off a miracle, is who is going to beat De La Salle, and when are they going to get beat? Well, I don't know, Dan, and you know what? It, it, it's like it's, I, I think, I've only been doing this seven years. How many years? I don't know how many years I've been doing Five. This, but I'm tired of hearing it. I don't really care. You know, I just want to watch kids play, and, you know, and, and I'll tell you one thing. Coach Lattice or Paul would be glad when it's over. You know, he, he, I, I he mean, might. I, I, I would say he would be glad. Is uh, this is the only way he'd be glad? Is if they lost like like Clayton lost last night, where they yeah. they laid it all on the line. They did the best they could. If they go out and get beat forty to nothing by someone and don't play well, he won't be happy. Well, that's going to happen, yeah. But if he, if, if they played a game where the, the other team just outplayed him and they maybe won by one and uh, and that was it and the streak ends, he'd probably say, hey, we did the best we could. Well, you know what? That's exactly what he say. Let's watch a touchdown right here, Dan. It's right up the middle. It's hard to believe this guy was not the st starting running back. How many teams could he start for in oh, the United well, States? Let me see. The Raiders are one. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. Let's just recap about De La Salle season, well, there, well, and There's a lot of W's. Yeah. You see that? WD-40, Steve. You see a lot of W's there. 
Paul Mitty, Palma, St. Francis. We talked about this. The big game against Evangel over at DVC that was on ESPN2, you can see there, 27 to 10. Anything in the BVAL, and you know, at some point, you're going to have to start wondering, are they going to continue that relationship? Are these BVL teams going to want to continue to get beat by, uh, by De La Salle year after year? Are they going to have to go totally independent one year and play all their games against other Oh, opponents? I don't think so. I don't think it's, uh, we, got, we got to get that carried away because the fact of the matter is here. If I'm a coach, Gal and these guys, you know what? This is a great challenge for them. You got a chance to do something nobody's done in years. Pittsburgh did it one year. I mean, they've been beat, you know? Twice in 19 years. Okay, well, they've been beat. But when you start going, what do you think they're going to lose? Gonna, you know what? Everything's going to come to an end someday. I mean, you know, and Coach Lattis or someday's going to sit down and say, I'm done. You know, when's that going to happen? When's he going to have enough? I don't know. You know? Well, gonna... you talked about that. Did you see, was that in the book or just something that you heard about him saying that he's sacrificed some of his family life for well, this? Well, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I went and bought the book today by uh, uh, Hayes for the Contra Costa Times. And there he is. You know, he's talking. About it, but I, I bought it today, and I just got to read a little bit of it. You know, but it opened my eyes to some things. But I also knew some of them things already. A lot of people don't know, you know. And and no matter what, no matter what you, you've dedicated your life to, and, you know, he it's not just football what he dedicates his life to. It's kids, and it's putting your time into changing lives. And you know what? I'll tell you what. There, there's one thing that they talk about at De La Salle is love is loving people love god love people you do that you're going to have well, a successful life and that's that what they do and think about other people besides yourself those are the kind of things they do there that people don't understand and if people got a problem with that i don't know man i i, I don't I, I mean that's i try to base my life on that you know love god love people that's about basically it you know if you do those things you're going to be a success in life geo to kick and this is number 24 killings and Killings right now. He's making a killing. Look at and this. Then, and then I think he just got killed. <laughs> Man, he was moving, and Stroud hit him and knocked him back about five yards. And then he was tackled. Short return, and Pittsburgh has a minute 38 here to try to get something going. The thing, of course, that's so impressive Let's about Lattice. Let's watch Lattis the replay Sir. right here. Let's watch this, Dan. I'll get on that thought on, on the impression of Lattice when we get back. Now, watch this. It looks like it's something in the making. And right there, you're thinking, hey, he's got something going on. Now, watch this hit here he takes. There's a spanking that knocks him back. I like to get that number, Dan. That's Stroud. That's Stroud. And, and then, then Dominguez cleaned it and up. And then Dominguez just says, okay, enough of this madness. Now, I was going to say that Coach Lottasur is a dedicated religious teacher and very, very much into the uh, religious side of things, and, and that's how he lives his life. Very impressive. Corral to throw. Backside. And now he's scrambling. He gets away from one guy, and then Hanks makes a tackle at the 26-yard line, or what looks like the 26 mud line from right. here. Now, Steve, it's kind of stopped raining. Now the wind's starting to blow, and now it's cold. This is yeah. ugly out here today. Well, you know what? Well, we're all alive, and that's important. But right here, he's, he's just oh, in trouble. There's, I, I, I think, you know, it's there's a lot of good coverage by the defensive backs by De La Salle, and he's been having to tuck the ball and go. Again, and sacked. Look, look at this. <laughs> Big number 55. There's a, why is there a penalty on that? What in the world could anyone have done wrong there? I don't know. Is it Baylau, Dan? Is it Bailau? Well, that's how you pronounce his name, Bailau. Well, he was the guy hit on number 55, and he tried to do a slam on him, tried to do a WWE slam on him, and they wouldn't have no part of it. WWE slam. Whatever. Yeah, okay. Are we going to start picking on each other last game of the, last game of the year? We'll be I'm doing just, fine. You told okay. me to correct you tonight. Okay, thank you. Hey, you want a Listerine mitt? It's a face mask. Okay. I didn't see that. Let's, Let's see if we, if we get on the replay right here. Here's Bailout number 55, and watch him. He goes WWF right here. Oop! <laughs> and he couldn't see, get him up the front. I don't see anyone on a face mask. It looks like it's on the back of his helmet, not on well, the front. No, oh, whatever. Whatever. That's I right. don't think Pittsburgh's complaining. No, you got the guy right next to him. He didn't call it. The guy walking in late throws the flag, so I don't know. So it'll be a first down. Ball the, the 26, Dan, if you can believe that. at the 34. Yes, it is, after that play. Thank you very much. It was on the 26. Thank you. Corral to throw again. Scrambling. He's been in trouble all night, mm -hmm. Steve. Lofts one. It's nearly intercepted, but then caught by Davis. Yep. And Davis is out of bounds near midfield. And that was a circus catch and really should have been intercepted. Yeah. And you know, Dan, with 37 seconds left, Pitt's first big positive thing on offense right here with 37 seconds left. Let's watch the replay right here. Should have probably been intercepted. 
Roughing the passer, they're going to add 15 on it. There's a chance they may be able to get on the board before the half. That will give them a big lift going into the locker room. This is what Galley needs. But right there, hey, okay, we'll take it. That was Donnie Payne defending mm -hmm. there. Yep. And Davis made the catch. And now they're going to move this all the way up. Perhaps inside the 40 to the 35-yard line. And Pittsburgh Pitt needs to score a touchdown here Whoop. just to have some positive uh, Something positive happened. Well, well, Dan, you got to get a little creative right here. Do a little herky jerky, something stupid or something that, you know. And they got three timeouts left. So they use the middle of the field all they want. That doesn't come into play. There's 37 seconds. You, know, you don't got to restrict yourself to nothing right here. You got plenty of time to do what you want to do. And if they can score right here, well, maybe we get to, you know, that's something they need to go in the locker room on. They have three timeouts. Corral to throw on first down. Escapes pressure, throws. He had a receiver. It was Cliff, and, and they got the flag. flag. There was a yep. bump there late. Yep. Colvin kind of elbowed yep. Cliff, and I think the, I think the Pittsburgh sideline got that call. Yeah, and 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 you know I. That's it's one a of those judgment ones, call. Yeah. It's a judgment call, and you know what? I'm not going to sit there and say it was a bad call. I think we have to see it on the replay. There's definitely there's definitely a bump. Okay, we just got to see. I think it's a good call. Let's take let's take a look at it, Dan. Here's Corral, and watch this throw right here. I don't know if we can get it. We're probably going to be late on it. We'll be late on it. Yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't get the, the bump, but it was there. Let's look at another angle. Bail out. Giving all the pressure. Creating. Now, that's watch a, that's this. A, that was Corral, not Bail out. On the pressure. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That was Corral being pressured by Bail out. Thank you. <laughs> You've got too many owls and laos going on right now. There's oh, I need a latte. <laughs> The ball now placed at the 20-yard line. First down, 37 seconds. I thought there were 37 seconds to play. There's still 37 seconds to play. Corral has time. He's rolling. He throws. It's in just an absolute yep. swamp down there to yep. Cliff, and there was coverage by Colvin. It's incomplete. But, you know, Dan, I like what he's doing right here with his legs. He's getting out, and he's kind of doing the opposite thing, you know. Now they got to respect the run, and his passing, this kid can throw the ball. He really can, you know. I mean, he's proven it. So, uh... Right there, I, I think that's something. Let's watch him right here, Dan. A little Michael Vick, who we'll see this weekend again, okay? He's getting out right here. And look at all the space in front of him. He probably could have ran it. He could have run it. I mean, there was a lot of space there. He decided to go for it, and right there, the ball's on the ground. You can see six green jerseys down there in that yeah. picture and just one pirate. 22 seconds. Now, see, th this is what kills me. Okay, there were 37 me? seconds to go. They ran a play. They didn't run the clock. Then there were 37 seconds. Now there's 22. Well, you know what happened, Dan? They, they took the seconds off the clock during the play. They must have. Because, they did. Uh, now there's 22 seconds to go. Ball to 21. Second down. Corral has time. Throws over the middle. Has a receiver. It's Brown. And Brown has it at the yep. six. What a great catch by him. Boy, he got punished, too. Boy. Pittsburgh has three timeouts. I don't oh, know yeah. why they're not using them. They have now. And, boy, they really need this, Dan. They need this really bad. Just to pick them up to, for the morale and to be able to go in the locker room. Let's watch it right here, Dan. Let's watch the price he pays for making this catch in the middle of traffic right here. But you're going to get hit anyway. You're going to get hit. Catch it. He gets hit. It's just a concentration. Who is it? Kelly on it, Dan? It's Colvin. It's Colvin. What a lick he put on him. So I think Pittsburgh has now called a timeout. They have. They have two left. That was a, that's the best pass he's thrown all night. Well, that's a great catch by him, too. Adjustment midair, extending himself and sacrificing, giving up his body to move the chains for his teammates. That's a great job on his behalf. 15 seconds to go in the half, 25 to nothing. De La Salle, there's the sideline, and that looks like uh, looks like Highway 4 when it used to flood. Yes, it does, right below Loveridge. But you know one thing about Highway 4, I really like the community. There's really no traffic, and it's always nice from Antioch nice, to Concord. It just nice, flows long. It just flows beautiful. It's, it's, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I, I uh, You know what? I'm, I'm, I'd like to see, get a report on Robinson. He hasn't been in the game no. for a while. They have a Blanche in the backfield here, first down. Corral to throw again. Look at this. Big rush, and Corral's in trouble, and he's yep. not even to get back to the line of scrimmage. Call and they call timeout, timeout they with will. nine seconds with nine to go. Left. And they still got one left after this, so they can still use the middle of the field. Here's a replay right here. Look who's coming from the outside, Dan. Bailau, number 55. And is that 54 on there? Yeah, who's 54, Dan? Let's give him some Kato's. That's love. Drosba. Drosba. Matt Drosba. We haven't mentioned his name, but he's been a great player there. He's 6'3", 270. 
And he's a senior. He's a senior, and you know, just by his size, there's people looking at him. Well, uh, as I mentioned, that's one thing. We always say this about De La Salle. Oh, they're going to lose everybody. Well, there's a bunch of guys that are coming up that are going to play. One guy is Gutierrez. He's going to be a heck of a player. Yep. And on the defensive side, Payne and Watson are juniors. Right. But they are going to lose a, a chunk of, uh, of players here. And one of the things someone, I, I, I don't know who told me this. I, I kind of forget. But someone said in a couple of years, De La Salle maybe. Maybe 2005, 2006, with what they've seen that they have at the freshman level, maybe they might have a chance. You know, that's how you have to look at it. Corral to throw. Jump ball, Crowley, end zone, tipped away by Payne. That, that looks like the same play they run that won the Clayton Valley game in yep. overtime. Yep, it does. Just a and flag pattern to Crowley over there. And you know, Dan, I like to tie it in down here in football. Well, <laughs> in high seconds, football. they got one more chance. This yeah, will oh, be this it. This is going to be it. They're on the eight-yard line. Four seconds left. They're going to think about it. Last time out for Pittsburgh. Number 32 was in on that play, Dan, Donnie Payne. And I just love all that static that the rain is causing. Yeah, well. Now, the, purchase your copy of this game, shipping courtesy of UPS included. Call 933-626 for Astro Metal Math. There'll be a great CC Rock. I think we had a new one this, this week. And we got basketball season, and we also have, uh, I think we had a new CC Rock coming. There's the uh, basketball schedule, subject to change, of course. Yeah. But uh, probably uh, on the 24th, we'll probably do the Antioch game, probably Antioch and I uh, think that's Antioch South. South. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah, we'll do Antioch and South the 24th. Got to get a lot going there for one game. But, that, but I like the way we're moving around. You know, yeah. we're going to different places, which is nice. Everybody's going to get a little shot. Northgate, College Park, Maramonte, Campo, San Ramon. Monta Vista's there a couple times. Okay. Maramonte, Akalanas. Akalas is in it. So we got some people. We're bouncing around. Then we got the playoffs. So that'll put some other people in. So here this we go, dude. Last play of the first half. Corral looking. Corral steps up, throws. He had Cliff. Cliff had a touchdown, and he dropped it. Wow. That, that would have been... A big play for Pittsburgh. Yep. And unfortunately, and it could have been the ball. The ball is wet, and, and you know you haven't seen the ball the, almost the whole half. But that would have been a touchdown. That was a nice play call, and it uh, it doesn't go. Steve, 25 nothing at halftime. Not really a big shock. No. Nope. For anyone here. Does, and yeah, as you know, you said, does Pittsburgh have a chance in the game? Do they have a chance in the second half? Well, Danny, I mean, you know, they can uh, come back. This game's far from over. They got a whole second half to play. And I'll tell you what, Coach Lattisur is not going to go in there and be content with what's going on here. He's going to be on them for some things and probably some other coaches are but Pittsburgh's got to just hit the you know a play like that they got to keep their head high look out they look like they're just they, they got to get off and regroup right now they're just dragging themselves off the field right now so the, you see down in the bottom of your screen they're just crawling off the field that's not a good sign so they're, they're gonna Galley's gonna have to get in there and get on them okay I think Coach, we're gonna get Coach Galley's with... coming over to uh, talk to Tony so uh, we're gonna last time we had Tony we didn't get much out yeah. let's hope it works let's hope it works we're gonna send it down to Tony Nope. The mic's out, Dan. We're not going to yep. do it. Do your thing, Daniel. It ain't going to work. So we're going to send it out of here. 25-0 De La Salle at halftime. We'll be back with stats and highlights after this. Great Mexican food, home of the famous margarita, and fun and food in a festive environment. That's Celia's of Antioch. For over 30 years, Celia's has served specialties like fajita supreme, camarones a la ranchera, and other great Mexican food that has brought people from around the area to eat. Every Thursday night is live music from Trio and Saturday night mariachis. That's Celia's of Antioch for great Mexican food. For nearly 50 years, Mazze dealership has happily given you the friendly service and affordable prices you deserve. And with our large selection of inventory, you always have choices. Hi, I'm Matt Mazze. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for all your support over the years. Because of you, we've become the number one Pontiac GMC truck volume dealer in Contra Costa County. All of us in Mazze, thank you. Come celebrate with us at Mazze Pontiac Cadillac Buick GMC in Antioch. Sam, what the heck are you doing? We're already late for the prom. First of all, I'm not Sam. I'm his sister, Samantha, and I'm changing the oil in my car. 
Isn't that a guy's job? No, and it saves me a lot of money. Is there anything I can do to help without getting dirty? Yeah, you can take this used oil and filter down to the certified collection center on the corner. Or if you have curbside used oil and filter cycling, seal the oil in a properly labeled container and put the filter in a Ziploc bag and leave it on the curb with the rest of the recyclables. Well, I'm ready to go. You look beautiful. Oh, thanks. Wait, don't forget to use oil and filter. Whoops! Gorgeous. Oh, no! Oil spill! Quick! Kitty litter. Authentic Italian atmosphere. Rocco's Ristorante. Room for the whole family. Rocco's Ristorante. Pizza, beer, sports. Rocco's! Great place for your next team party. Rocco's. The best pizza in the East Bay. Rocco's. Your table is always ready at Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria at the corner of Oak Grove and Ignacio in Walnut Creek. Tonight's Comcast Game of the Week is made possible by a generous donation from Jim's Auto Body, located on West 10th Street off Summersville Road in Antioch. Since 1962, Jim's Auto Body has been fixing and repairing cars and trucks with expert craftsmanship and service. Let Jim's Auto Body take care of your bodywork, painting, and framework at their state-of-the-art facility on 10th Street in Antioch. Mary Marie's Salon in historic downtown Antioch. Recently opened in May of 2003, this professional hairstyling, coloring, manicure, pedicure, and facial waxing salon offers your styling needs for the entire family in a relaxed, comfortable atmosphere. Tina Lucido, Tisha Johnson, and staff invite you to a unique experience at 308 G Street in downtown Antioch. The dentistry offices of Lee Keller and Daniel Burke DDS. Lee Keller and Daniel Burke have been serving East County for years with a personal commitment to their clients in uncompromising dental care with an atmosphere of comfort and experience. With state-of-the-art sterilization technique and equipment, their staff of highly trained professionals will make your every visit one you'll look forward to in the future. That's Lee Keller and Daniel Burke, DDS and staff in Antioch. Matchmaker's Restaurant in Antioch. For the last eight years, Matchmaker's Restaurant has been serving great American, Italian, and Mexican food. Owner Jess Williamson and Chef Edward Godoy serve daily specials that are as tasty as they look. Meeting place of the 40s Plus Club on Friday morning, Matchmaker's Restaurant is great food. 913 West 10th Street near the Contra Costa County Fairgrounds in Antioch. The Quilting Queens at 720 West 2nd Street in downtown Antioch specializing in quilt fabrics, notions, quilt surfaces, and glasses. Whether you're a beginner or advanced quilter, Alexandra and Bernie will give you and your quilt that personal touch. That's the Quilting Queens on West 2nd Street in historic downtown Antioch. No Name Pizza in Antioch. With the dough made fresh daily, No Name Pizza has great tasting pizza, perfect for the team party. They also feature Italian pastas, gourmet pizzas, all in a family atmosphere. With 21 beers on tap, let No Name Pizza be your hangout this season. A great place to watch the Comcast Game of the Week. That's No Name Pizza next to Lowe's in Antioch. Charter Funding Incorporated of Antioch. With great rates still available, let Charter Funding Incorporated assist in finding the right loan for you. As a mortgage broker, Charter Funding Incorporated works with many lenders to find the best program to fit your needs. Whether it's a rate reduction, cash out, new purchase, good or bad credit, let the professionals of Charter Funding Incorporated handle all your loan details. Call today at 776-1700. Brendan Theaters of Concord and Pittsburgh, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems and stadium style seating. Check out the Brendan Theater website for great savings ideas. Thanks again to all of our friends from the Comcast Game of the Week. Back at the Oakland Coliseum, 
The Network Associates Coliseum, the North Coast Section 4A Championships. De La Salle leads at halftime, 25 to nothing. Dan Wall and Steve Sanchez as the Spartans go for their 151st consecutive victory. And here's the highlights from the first half, and it was pretty much all De La Salle, Steve. Well, it really was, Dan. It was late. Here's uh, Gutierrez right here in the pocket. Look at this throw right here. This is a thing of beauty right there. Just Coleman right there up in the... Uh, Real nice hands on his part. That's when it started right there. They missed the extra point. And here it is. Here's a, a, a nice screen, screen to Kelly. Now watch this down the sidelines. You're going to have a guy submarine him, and he misses him. Watch this. Just misses him totally. And that causes him. you got to wrap up. Didn't do it. Commitment to excellence. There they all are around it. And right here. It's amazing in the rain, all these passes. It really is. And this right here was a huge one right here. I mean, big time play. 55 yards to Colvin. This is my hot tub play of the game right here. It's hot tub weather right there, Dan. It's raining. You get in the hot tub. And right here, here's Kelly right here. And uh, number 51, Dan, he had a great first half on both sides of the ball, Chris Biller. So uh, I'll deal with show. 25 to nothing, as you see the, uh, the highlights. The Pittsburgh band has just finished their, uh, their run out there. There's about... 12 minutes uh, and 50 seconds to go here at halftime. So we're going to send it out of here once again, and we'll be back with the third quarter after this on Comcast. Mexican food, home of the famous margarita, and fun and food in a festive environment. That's Celia's of Antioch. For over 30 years, Celia's has served specialties like fajita supreme, camarones a la ranchera, and other great Mexican food that has brought people from around the area to eat. Every Thursday night is live music from Trio and Saturday night mariachis. That's Celia's of Antioch for great Mexican food. Hi, Frankie. It's Christy. Do you want to come over for a swim? Wow, I'll be right over. What are you doing, Christy? Oh, hi, Frankie. My oil's really dirty. Will you change it for me? I thought we were going swimming, though. I guess so. Gee, thanks. All the stuff's in the garage, but don't make a mess, otherwise my dad will get mad. Well, I'm done changing your oil and filter. Now I'm going to go to the certified center on the corner and recycle your oil and filter. Uh, you don't need to go through all that trouble, Frankie. I got a much better idea of what to do with the oil and filter. My city has curbside oil and filter recycling. Just seal it up tight and put it on the curb with the other recyclables. Call 1-800-NO-DUMPING for more information or check out the website at www.funnelhead.com. Authentic Italian atmosphere. Rocco's Ristorante. Room for the whole family. Rocco's Ristorante. Pizza, beer, sports. Rocco's! Great place for your next team party. Rocco's. The best pizza in the East Bay. Rocco's. Your table is always ready at Rocco's Ristorante and Pizzeria at the corner of Oak Grove and Ignacio in Walnut Creek. Tonight's Comcast Game of the Week is made possible by A&B Creative Trophies. They specialize in awards, letterman jackets, embroidery, and team trophies on West 6th Street in Antioch. Simply the best selection, price, and service. That's A&B Creative Trophies of Antioch. Mention the Comcast Game of the Week and receive 5% off your next order. Lone Tree Golf Course, Antioch's secret treasure. Built in 1934, this wonderfully scenic 18-hole golf course is a golf value. Longtime PGA golf professionals Pat Kane and Jack Oakley host many tournaments and functions and have private and group lessons. Their junior golf program is the best in Northern California and has helped many kids learn to enjoy the game. The next time you feel like teeing it up or hitting some range balls, give Lone Tree Golf Course a call. Mellows, heating, air conditioning, and sheet metal, serving the greater East Bay and beyond, residential, commercial, and industrial, keeping the East Bay comfortable for over 26 years. Let their helpful, courteous sales staff help you with all your air and heating needs. That's Mellows, 1241 Main Street in Oakley. The new Mecca Cafe on Railroad Avenue in downtown Pittsburgh. 
serving Contra Costa and beyond for over 30 years. Eat in or order it to go. Guillermo and his crew cook with pride. Italia's Italian restaurant, deli and catering. Delicious pasta, meatballs, Parmesan dishes, and more. Specialty sandwiches like roasted eggplant, cuchadatis, and other traditional cookies. And don't forget the cannolis. Family owned and operated, that's Battaglia's, Antioch's oldest Italian restaurant at 3100 Contra Loma Boulevard in the Save Mart Shopping Center. SNS import servicing in your foreign car. State of the art tools and equipment with friendly and helpful service. Let Randy and Mike take care of your auto repair needs. SNS will also take your used oil. Caring for our community, SNS import service. 806 West 10th Street in Antioch. Brendan Theaters of Concord in Pittsburgh, featuring 14 screens of movie magic. All theaters have Lucasfilm THX digital sound systems and stadium-style seating. Check out the Brendan Theater website for great savings ideas. RSC Rental Service Corporation in Martinez. RSC offers a wide variety of equipment specific to the petrochemical industry, as well as the general contractor and homeowner. We deliver straight to the site and have a fully trained staff of mechanics and office personnel to fit every need. That's Rental Service Corporation, 4030 Pacheco Boulevard in Martinez. Paramount Technology of Concord, located behind Tower Records in Concord. Paramount Technology has it all. Mobile computer service calls, in-house repair, and a friendly atmosphere. Your computer wizards with expert service and products for today's and tomorrow's computer world. Delta RC Raceway and Hobby Shop, Northern California's largest radio control racing facility behind the fairgrounds on 10th Street in Antioch. Delta RC features a well-stocked shop, world-class banked pave, oval, and on-road track, year-round, indoors in the winter, off-road racing, and one of California's last dirt oval racing programs. That's Delta RC Raceway and Hobby Shop in Antioch. Jim Lanter and Carol Sievers of State Farm Insurance. With a combined experience of over 31 years, they take pride in helping the client understand their coverage. They'll help you make good, sound financial decisions regarding insurance, mutual funds, banking, and home loans. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's Jim Lanter and Carol Sievers at 716 West 2nd Street in Antioch. Thanks again to all of our friends from the Comcast Game of the Week. Back at the uh, Network Associates Coliseum, 25 to nothing, De La Salle at halftime, and the uh, Spartan Band is out on the field, and we're going to send it down to the field right now for a little bit of uh, De La Salle Band action. We're going to send it down to Tony with a recap, and then we'll be back with some more of the De La Salle band. All right, guys, I talked to some of the Pittsburgh coaches on the sideline before the half, and they were not surprised at that how, how well the Spartans have been able to throw the ball. They said, hey, that's just what they do. I talked to Pittsburgh defensive lineman Rashawn Harris, and he says the bad footing is really hurting them on the pass rush. They're trying to take short, choppy steps in order to get the passer, but they just cannot get off on the snap count. So in a very strange way, the bad weather has actually helped the passing game, at least the Spartans' passing game anyway. Let's go back upstairs. Thanks, Tony, for that recap, and we're gonna, and that'll do it for uh, the De La Salle marching band. We still have about five minutes to go in halftime. They have an extended halftime out here, and uh, we're gonna, we're going to send it out here. We'll be back with the third quarter after this on Comcast.
Back at the Network Associates Coliseum in Oakland, California, the North Coast Section 4A Championship heads to the third quarter with De La Salle ahead 25 to nothing. Dan Wall with Steve Sanchez, Matt Bolander, and our great crew here on Comcast. Our last broadcast of the season for football. We'll start basketball in uh, late December, early January. Steve, you know, uh, you mentioned earlier, it looks like Pittsburgh, uh, there's our basketball schedule for you. The Pittsburgh looks like they might have lost a little bit of the uh, energy that they had early in the game. And... Uh, you might want to come on, comment on that right Well, Dan, you know, uh, before you always play De La Salle, you get pumped up, you get fired up. This is your big chance, and they just suck it right out of you every time. You know, you come out here, next thing you look up, boom, there's a quick score. You make a mistake, boom, there's another quick score. And all of a sudden, you just start fighting this uphill battle against them. And uh, now it's 25 to nothing. Uh, at halftime, they beat them 26-0 last time they played, so they've all already almost matched what they played for them last time. So no matter who you are, you, that balloon's got to come out, that air's got to come out of that balloon a little bit. You're, you're only human, and it's really hard for a coach to get you fired back up to come back up for the second half. But somehow, you got to do it. Yeah, and you got to... You, you, there, there you go. You, you kind of got to get fired up right there. there. Who was that? You know, that looks like Pete Rose and Tom Arnold had a kid or something. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> yes. Know, that's it. I look call at, him. Look at, look I at, call him Pose. Look at, <laughs> that guy is wow. They, that, that, that guy's out there. But anyway, Dan, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's it, you know, you can only get fired up so much. I mean, it's draining just. You know, mentally, you know, yeah. trying to get up for them. Not just getting beat up physically, mentally to try to prepare for these guys. And But that's what you got to do as a coach. You got to try to bring them out and tell them, hey, guys, you know what? Let's go out and just, you know, do what they did to us. See, somehow you got you got to get them fired up. And Brian Robinson hasn't played since early in the first quarter. And we have uh, yet to hear a, a report on if he was injured. Uh, we did see him being attended to on the sidelines in that first quarter. And uh, they've had to go with a succession. Right. Of, I mean, they've had a lot of injuries. They, they, they lost have. early in the year. They lost Derek Blanche. Uh, they didn't have Sino for the, the last part of the season. They they lost a Blackman who has right. come back and played. So right. they uh, it, we haven't seen if the other uh, Blanche is going to come back That's or right. not. But you know, Dan. Besides all that, before this game, you were saying, you know what? I mean, you knew it, and I know you're saying, if anybody's going to give him a game, these are the guys right now. Do it. They were peaking right at the right time. Look what they did to Foothill. You know, and, and even Galley was saying, you know what? I like our chances. I mean, we are playing the top of our game. And then you come in and run into a buzzsaw like everybody else has done for 155 straight games. I mean, I, if I ain't mistaken, the first, go ahead, Dan, let's just take this, we'll talk about that later. I mean, it's it's a tough thing to do. Gio the kick to start the third quarter. It's Killings at the 12-yard line. Behind a wall of Pirates, makes a nice cut up to the 30, and the ball's on the ground. Wait to see for this call. The ball's on the ground. I think it went out of bounds. Yeah, it did, Dan, but what a hit. Wow, let's get the number of that freight train. Let's send it down to Tony. I think he might have an update on Brian Robinson. Okay, let's go. Okay, guys, got a report on Brian Robinson of Pittsburgh. Hurt his shoulder. Apparently, it's serious enough that he will not return to this ball game. That's why you didn't see him on the field there late in the first half. Brian Robinson out of the game for Pittsburgh. So uh, right now, if you look out there, they're playing with a backup quarterback, Corral and Fresino. Now a backup running back, whoever it was in the ball game, Blackman was yep. playing early in the uh, second quarter for Robinson. I'd like to see that hit again, Dan, if we get a chance. Let's see if we hear it goes right here. Let's watch this hit right here. Who it is? It's number 50. That was number 50. Wow. Steve Fujimoto. Fujimoto put the Fujimoto on him. First that out. hurt. Corral in trouble, gets away from it. He's he's doing the Houdini act, yes, there's no is. doubt about it. Throws down the sideline for Crawley, and it's incomplete. Good coverage that time. Stroud was over there, along with Payne, and also with uh, Kelly. And guess who we had to get away from, Dan? Chris Biller. Chris Biller. Oh, we met, didn't we mention that name a little bit in the first half? Yes. Nothing has changed. No. He came out and said, Coach, should I do, just do the same stuff I've been doing? He said, Biller. Do what you've been doing. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, stopped raining here, but it's still very, I, very wet. I love the story in the book where Lattisher goes in and, and all the linemen, are they, they got their heads between their hands, between their legs, and there's mud everywhere, and they're not doing their assignments, and guys are shooting the gaps. And he looks at me and goes, hey, how come I got to be the problem solver here every time? You know, you guys figure it out. And walks away from them. You know? <laughs> okay. So that tells you the kind of coach he is. You guys figured it out. And they did. They figured it out. Ball's on the ground. De La Salle has it. Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. They had it, and then they dropped it. Yeah. Now Pittsburgh has it back, but that's the third time they fumbled the snap from center. And you, but you know, Dan, I think that's a great story. You know, he's sitting there. Everybody thinks he's probably overcoached. Either. Let's watch the replay right here, Dan. And uh, let's see the ball get on the, the turf right here. Yep, but he just never got. And, you know, he's had a little bit of trouble about three times um, of just holding on to the ball. And there's another example of they dodged a bullet. You don't want to give them the ball down there on the short end of the field because that's just points. We just started the third quarter here from the Oakland Coliseum. 
better known as the net. Third and 10 for Pittsburgh. They're trying to do something. They almost scored to end the second quarter. Corral in big trouble, and he is sacked. Just thrown backwards by number 55 for De La Salle. Cal Bailau. Here's another guy we've called his name a yep. lot tonight. Bailau and Biller, the two Bs. Yes. Killer Bees. Killer Bees. The Killer Bees. Hey, that's good, Dan. But right here, here it is. And right here, when this is just too strong, and you ain't going nowhere, and... Uh, that's the way that is. What a great play by number 5-5. Five, five. Huge Bailout. loss, 15 yards. Fourth and 25 from the 15-yard line. Terry into punt. Almost blocked. Mm -hmm. There's a flag. They're going to get rough in the kicker. Yep. Colvin uh, dropped it, and then he gets up. He's a nice attempt for a tackle there. Wow, look at He's this. finally knocked out of bounds on the far sideline at the 42-yard line, but I think we're going to get a roughing, and we'll have to wait and see if it's a 5- or 15-yard variety of roughing. Well, Dan, we're going to have to see, and uh, I, I was watching the punt in the air, but I seen the flag on the ground by the kicker, so I know there's some infraction back there. It's a 15-yard. one. That's going to... Is, it and is it's an automatic, automatic first, first okay. count. So. Yeah, I, I never know that in high school if they give that automatic. What's they shoot on any 15-yarder? I don't care what it is. Let's watch a replay, Dan. And there it is right there. Yeah, he, yeah, he was running, too. I, I think it's number 87. Nope, there is no 87. There's Coach Abono on the sidelines. Yep, and he's... There's John. He don't look very happy. He looks frustrated. You know, he's a competitor, too. That guy... These guys are all competitors. These guys on the Pittsburgh side. It's got to be frustrated. There's Galley, he's getting on Fafiti, and you know, it's just, it, it just flows over. It's a tough thing to do to play these guys. But you know, Galley has done a great job with these guys at Pitt. He's turned that program around, Dan. They've won back-to-back -back championships over there in that league, and uh, he's done a great job, and uh, he's got nothing to hang his head about. Uh, he'll build off this somehow. You know, he's a positive guy, and right now he's frustrated, and that's just the competitiveness coming out of him. But. Uh, they definitely got the right guy over there. Rocco's Restaurant and Pizzeria voted best pizza in the East Bay. Ignatia Valley wrote at Oak Grove. No doubt about it. Thank you, Rocco, for helping us every year. You're a big part of this program. Brendan Theaters in Concord of Pittsburgh. There's 14 screens in Concord. Do you know how many there are in Pittsburgh? Uh, 16. That's very good. Very good, Steve. Thank you. And go see that movie with that ugly guy Tom Cruise in it. Yeah, the Last Samurai. The Last Samurai. Are you into movies like that? No. What, kind of, what kind of movies you like? I like then? like cop movies and okay. adventure type. You know, I, I like like uh, you know real movies. I'm okay. not into that kind okay. of. Uh, hey, purchase stuff. your copy of this game. Shipping courtesy of the Big Brown Machine, UPS. I've been there. I got two more years. I'm done there, but I've been there for quite a while, and we'll bring it right to your door. Nine three three six two six four. Ask for Metal Matt. He'll be the guy taking a nap on the couch in the back of Comcast. <laughs> you can wake him up. After the timeout, Pittsburgh has a first down at the 30-yard line, so they're basically where they started. Yep. There's uh, one of the Pittsburgh staff coming yep. off the field. And our static's really getting bad here. Hopefully static get X is what it is yep. tonight. Corral yep. to throw. That was ugly. Just, I'll tell Look you, oh, man, and then... Parker Hanks just annihilated Clift, and he yeah. barely made it back to the line of scrimmage. You know what's amazing? Bailau too? and Dominguez was in on. Let's watch the replay right here, Dan. Just a quick two-step drop right here. Look at this pass. Look at that. That looks. <laughs> that was ugly. Yeah, that was ugly, and he's just not getting any. Hanks uh, just put a lick you know, to him. He's not getting any uh, traction off the ball. No. He just kind of threw it up for grabs, and Cliff got back to the line of scrimmage. You know the thing, though, is when you watch Pittsburgh, we've seen Cliff. Cliff look like uh, one of the greatest players ever, running around against Miramani and Clayton Valley and, yep. and Antioch, and then you come out against these guys, and he's he's just taken right out of the game. Yep. Corral to throw on second look at this, down. Look at this. Trouble again. And by who? Oh man, Biller again. Biller I'm is having a huge game. Well, you know what? He don't got to make a play the rest of the game, and he's my player of the game. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. I'm I'm just saying, hey, Biller's the man. Wasson, right there. 13 on the play. Yeah, he's he's been unbelievable. Let's watch number five one. Let's isolate on him. Big pass for us. Big hands. Pittsburgh's line though, really, <laughs> you know, they're not going to have a fun time watching this film. These no. guys are running right by him. Well, Dan, you know what? They're very fast. They're very strong. They got techniques. They're coached very well. It all adds up to, hey, I can't beat this guy. He can beat me. He's better than me, and that's the way it is. Let me oh, see uh, third. What are we? It third. is third. Oh, I, got a good I, got, one I got a good I got a good one. Third and Napa Sonoma. No, it's third in the Bay Bridge. Okay, that's fine. Corral to throw, and he's sacked again. If it's number 51. It's Biller again. Oh, wow. Just forget it. He is having an unbelievable game. And now it's fourth in the Goldie Gate Bridge. Yeah. 
And watch number 55 right here, Dan. No, folks, this is not a re 51. This is not a replay again. This is just a man who is very mad at somebody. Very wet. He's very wet. Very muddy. He doesn't like playing in the mud. He takes it out on everybody who gets in his way. Wow. 8.15 to go here in the third quarter. 25-0 De La Salle and Terry to kick again. The last time he kicked, he was roughed. This time the kick comes down, takes a bounce into the muck. Colvin picks it up at the 48. Look at Colvin this. has Look at the this. wall. Look at He's this. outside. He's at the 30. He's at the 20. Makes a cut. Tackled at the 16-yard line. Tripped up by the punter, Terry. But almost a touchdown that time. Cameron Colvin yep. having another big game for De La Salle. And, and you know, Dan? Let's watch the replay right here. He picks it up in the mud. And right here, watch this wall. Right there, there's Glasper. He does a good block. And there's a wall set up. Crack back, block, and just tripped up right there. If it wasn't there. for that, he might have made it oh, all the he, way in. If it wasn't for that, he's at six. They, they uh, place it at the 16-yard line, a 36-yard return. Gutierrez at quarterback for De La Salle, their first possession here of the third quarter, ahead by 25. Hand off to Kelly. Kelly, the workhorse yep. tonight. And there's uh, this time Harris uh, was yeah. in on it, and Harris and Shank. Shank. You know, we haven't had a lot of them because uh, they've really been staying away from that line there. They haven't really been running out. They did it to uh, the beginning of the game, but uh, them guys have just been really struggling trying to make plays, you know, because the, but they're just so good that there's nothing there in front of them to make. But you know, uh, folks, uh, we, we we're having some technical difficulties, so I, I hope everything's okay at home. But uh, me and Dan's have a lot of static in our headphone here. You know, sometimes we hear things, and then when you listen to it at home, you don't hear. It. Yeah, and you I know, think sometimes it does it to mess with us. Well, then sometimes I hear things, and I get home, I I see dead people, so <laughs> I don't know what's going on. No gain, second and 10. Gutierrez to throw. He's had a great night throwing. Mm -hmm. Throws to Colvin. Yep. Near sideline, knocked out of bounds. Short gain, it'll bring up a third down. Raphael Itson was over there with Roderick Wyatt. This what's a replay right here. Three-step drop in the pocket, and he has thrown the ball good considering the conditions, Dan, right there. There's that was Ruben. Wyatt who There's made the tackle. Good close by Wyatt. And then he kind of just like steps on him and puts his hand on his hand and mugs him. And the ball's at the nine, third and three, after a seven-yard gain, 6.36 to go, clock running here, third quarter. 25-0, De La Salle. Steve, uh, you know, they're just, it's, it's amazing. It is. It's just never, you know what? It's uh, incredible. And I tell people, sit back and enjoy it, folks, because it's just something You might not ever see it again. You might never see it again. It's something that's, it's just, it's a phenomenon. There's a penalty flag on the play, and it's probably a, uh, a motion or maybe a delay. And, you know, let's don't forget Biller on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, he's been doing a great job on the line, too. I mean, they've been running behind him. He's been opening up holes. That guy is a player. All these guys are players. That's how come they call them players. It's all coming to you. You know, sometimes you're yeah, amazing how it good is. you are. It's just the, the mind. It just. And, Dan, all of a sudden, it got calm. Yes. It and was serene. It was, it was very and wild. And yes. And rainy. And rainy. And windy. And now it's just like. It's like uh, yeah, it's like. Hi, welcome to <laughs> Men on Sports. <laughs> Listings. If you have great credit, shouldn't you be treated like you do? At eLoan, you are. With cash out refinancing from eLoan, we process your loan differently. From application to instant decision to appraisal, we do it online. That costs less, so you get a great rate. With no lender or appraisal fees, you get your cash out fast in as few as 12 days. You've worked hard for your great credit. The difference is, at eLoan, you're rewarded for it. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-22. California's first casino resort is now open, and it's a whole new game. We are back, counting down the top 10 NFL plays of all time. Now, it might upset some football purists that we're putting a kicker on our list at number four, but I'd like to see them try to kick a 45-yard field goal in a driving snowstorm that keeps their team's Super Bowl season alive. 
It's Adam Vinatieri. That's one guy who in New England, from what I understand, is rock star status. If anybody's ever tried to kick a, a football through the uprights, you know, it really hurts your leg. They always have that thing every year with a Gillette million dollar or whatever, and the guy from, you know, Home Depot, he gets to go kick a 30-yard field goal for a million dollars. Dennis Crawford will tee it up at the 25. And he always ends up kicking it 14 yards, and it gets two inches off the ground. Oh, it's wide left. The Raiders are up by three with less than a minute to go. The only shot they got at winning this game is if Ben Terry kicks a miracle field goal in a snowstorm. You could step in that snow, you couldn't see your shoes. You, you know that he's probably thinking to himself, oh my God, this is crazy. This is the Patriots season on the line. In the driving snow, people could barely see what was going on, and he hits a 45-yarder. The kick is away. It is. Scott Norwood is watching that going, oh, people are going to bring my name up again. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, it's just snowing a little bit. I mean, there was like that much snow on the ground. There's no eye in team, but there's an eye in Vinatieri. Yeah, just thought of that. They say pre pressure even bust pipes will turn a lump of coal into a diamond. He's a diamond. <laughs> Adam Vinatieri, absolute stud. Hey, I'm sorry, Raider fans, but I did warn you that this portion of the show might be a little rough. From one play that helped boot the silver and black out of the playoffs to another. At number three, it's Franco Harris and the Immaculate Reception. That's like almost a folly reel. You just know that it's not going to happen again. Was it ever even proven that this was truly an Immaculate Reception? Do we even know that Franco didn't make love to that ball at any point? Because they did eventually check the DNA on the ball and it did match. 22 seconds left in the 1972 playoff game between Oakland and Pittsburgh. The Steelers trail 7-6 and are facing fourth down. And then the impossible occurred, or rather, the immaculate. And there's a collision. And that, that's cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Franco Harris. Did the ball hit the ground? Did it bounce off a Steelers player, which was illegal at the time? I'm going to open this up again, like, you know, the Warren Committee. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Whether the ball touched the turf, I don't know, on the replay that you see the old film, it doesn't look like it did. That's a dead ball. That shouldn't have ever happened. And, and almost like the Zapruder film, you see somebody's eyes, and then you see the ball floating around, and then, and then you see Harris make the catch and run, and you don't have any perspective because it's an old piece of tape. The owner, Art Rooney, was actually in the elevator coming down to thank the team for a wonderful year and actually missed the play. He was at the right place at the right time. It's sort of like me, let's say I was a comic, you know, back in the 50s, and I woke up and Marilyn Monroe was next to me. That's how lucky he was. How long do you think the ref would have been under the hood had they had replay back then? Two more plays that have to be seen multiple times to be believed when the sports list returns. So now it's 4th and 26. 4th and 26, whoever would have thought anyone could do it. Uh, but I think we made history somewhere, and I think that was it. Plenty of time. Down the middle, it's Mitchell. After that big play, it kind of clicked all in our minds that, you know what, we're going to win this game. They're going to get forward progress and a first down. Your all-access pass to everything that is NASCAR. Serious points, Duke and Totally out. NASCAR. Weeknights on FSA. Dad! What should we do? I will come for you. Do you understand me? Oh, my God! Hold on! After tomorrow, own the DVD October 12th. No, we'll be fine. College Football Saturday on FSN. Record center Maurice Drew leads UCLA in a showdown with an Arizona squad looking to turn things around. Plus, gunslinger Brad Smith and Missouri look to make noise in a Big 12 battle with heated rival Baylor. College Football Saturday, presented by Kia Sarah on FSN. It's I 
Max, home of the funniest, freshest opinions in sports. Welcome back to my ongoing argument with the whole wide world. Every weeknight, Max takes on today's biggest names. I'm Max. Weeknights on FSN. Are you ready for a chainsaw that works hard but is easy to start? Then get ready for the new Steel MS-210C Chainsaw. It features the exclusive steel easy-to-start system that eliminates the need for a strong quick pull of the starter, making starting the saw almost effortless. Get the MS-210C featuring the steel easy-to-start now for just $279.95. To find a steel dealer near you, call 1-800-GO-STEEL, look in the yellow pages under saws, or visit SteelUSA.com. Totally Football is your inside source for all pro and college gridiron news. The hardest hitting football show in the biz. Patrick O'Neill and our insider Jay Glazer break all the stories before anyone else. When I first broke it, people were telling me, yes, this is going to cause such a heated debate. We'll take you inside the huddle and behind the scenes for all the pigskin action. Totally Football, weeknights on FSN. The only source that puts the racing man in tune with what's happening on and around the track. With expert analysis, racing insights, and the latest reports from the winner's circle, your all-access pass to everything that is NASCAR. Totally NASCAR, tonight on FSM. FSN. Welcome back to the Sports List, where we're almost to the moment of truth. But before we unveil the greatest NFL play of all time, let's take a look at numbers 10 through 3. The play where he busts through seven guys is just ridiculous. Throws to the end zone. Bowen! 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 They caught it! He's in pajamas. Let's be honest. You couldn't stop a guy in pajamas. Into the end zone, Falcons win in overtime. He just concentrated on the ball and came down with it. And was this as if Moses, or should I say Marcus, parted the sea? Kick is away. It is good. And cut out of the air. The ball is pulled in by Frank O'Hare. Things looked pretty bleak for the Tennessee Titans in the closing moments of their January 2000 playoff game against the Bills. But all they needed was Lorenzo Neal to field the kickoff and then hand the ball to Frank Whitecheck, who would then lateral to Kevin Dyson, who would race down the sideline for the winning touchdown. Simple? Oh, yeah. And number two, it's the Music City Miracle. Well, was it a lateral or a forward pass? If you looked at replays, it was right on the money. The line that they put on the field. So that was a forward pass. That was a very exciting play, except for the part where it sort of looked like a forward lateral. With just seconds left in the 2000 AFC wildcard game between Buffalo and Tennessee, the Bills led 16-15. Only a harmless kickoff stood between Buffalo and the next round. We loving it, like, oh, yeah, we're about to tackle the fat dude. It's over, game over. Every time the ball is thrown, you think there's a chance it could happen, and it's all because of that Cal Stanford game. Oh, and all of a sudden, he stops. And he just throws that sucker all the way to the other side. And I look, and I said, that's not good. That's not good. He had a, an escort of like six guys and one person in the way to stop him, and it wasn't going to happen. No flags on the play. It is a touchdown. If you watch that clip today 200 times, it still looks like it's probably not going backwards. Disbelief is not the word. It was unbelievable. Guys are crying. People stayed on that field for about hours. When the Bills find a way to lose a playoff game, can you really call it a miracle? How much of a miracle does it take to beat the Bills, the team that's lost four straight Super Bowls? You know why it was a miracle? Because those bums should have lost. That play shouldn't have happened. It's nobody's fault but your own, Buffalo. It's your fault. That's sort of the way the Bills operate, right? Eventually, it's all going to cave in. That's not a miracle. That's just the Bills. To hear you talk about it again, I'm kind of tearing up still, man, because that was my ring opportunity. And that obviously shows it ain't over until it's over. But seriously, how fun is it to beat the Bills? Now, beating the Cowboys, that's fun. For the sheer euphoria of knocking off America's team, at number one, it's Joe Montana tossing it up. 
and Dwight Clark coming down with the catch. You know the catch, I know the catch, the catch. They show it every playoff, every year, the catch. That was a great catch. Makes me cry. <laughs> Dwight Clark. I just think it was Dwight Clark in the air across the back of the end zone. It was electric. The 1981 NFC Championship game signaled a new era in the NFL. It was the end of the Cowboys dynasty and the beginning of the 49ers. Less than a minute to go in the NFC Championship game. The Niners are deep in Cowboy territory. If they score, they're going to go on to go to the Super Bowl. If not, the Cowboys go back. Touchdown! Dwight Clark catches the ball! You could see the ball coming at Dwight Clark, but it was up. It was high, and he really had to go up for it. Kind of made it look easy. It wasn't very spectacular, even though he probably went up, you know, higher than the goalpost. I see Clark, Montana, and Everson Walls, huh? Every time you see Everson Walls in the jersey, I mean, you want to, like, kind of put a little fuzzy thing on it. It's just, poor guy. I know Everson Walls felt bad about that one because he ain't even jump with him. You know, Everson Walls was down in. Dwight Clark made a hell of a catch. And it's so funny because it's the only catch I've ever seen Dwight Clark make in his entire career. So you knew Joe Montana was going to find a way. He kept gliding to the right, gliding to the right, and he held on the ball as late as he could, and then he threw it to the place where only his guy could get it. That's the catch, okay? That's the greatest catch of all time. Some people say that's the name of that game. And in that instant, a dynasty was born. That's our list. I'm Summer Sanders. We'll see you next time. Adam Benetari, what can I say? What can I say? Where I come from, we do all our scoring with our feet. Right, so I'm a little bit partial to a bit of Adam Benetari, a bit of a kicker. I mean, the guy could stroll into a Premier League team and probably do the business. You know, long ball merchant, you know, set pieces. Adam Benetari, no one comes close. hear what they say, that the Red Sox are going to handle the Angels, that the Atlanta Falcons are in the same class as the Philadelphia Eagles, that Felix Trinidad gave Ricardo Mayorga the beating of the year, but I, Max, say, wrong, wrong, wrong. You haven't seen Michael Holly after a pillow fight with his sorority sisters. <laughs> Welcome back to my ongoing argument with the whole wide world. I've lined up opponents and hand-picked my executive producer in New York City. It is executive producer Bill Wolf. Wolf, set it up. Max, today's battle is 12 rounds of disagreement with one point at stake in each round. I'll judge it because I'm your boss and on the line, your public humiliation. We start, as always, with today's top sports news, including the chance that the Houston Astros are unstoppable. The chance that the New York Jets are New England's biggest threat. Plus, Max goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Fox NFL analyst Troy Aikman. Representing the world in each sports argument for the first half of the fight in Boston, it's the author of best-selling book, Patriot Reign. It's Michael Holly. Hey, Max, yeah. I've looked everywhere. I can't find the Oakland A's playoff schedule. <laughs> Where do you play? What a large face on such a small surface area of head you have, Michael. I pause Michael using this button. This button pauses Bill Wolf. We call it a MeVR. Wolf, first topic, round one. A difficult road either makes you battle-tested or battle-weary. Kellerman's days in the lunchroom at the Gifted Kids High School made him New York's nerdiest thug. What becomes of the Anaheim Angels remains to be seen. The Halos were just 15 and 13 in September, but they did survive a three-game elimination series at Oakland and host the Red Sox in the ALDS starting Tuesday. But the world gives the Red Sox the series edge over Anaheim, Max. The Anaheim Angels are constructed a lot like that Angels team that won the World Series in 2002, Michael. Excellent defense, a lights-out bullpen, and a never-say-die attitude. It's unclear if this Boston team is constructed like the last Red Sox team that won a World Series, although I have heard some 95-year-old Bostonians comparing Johnny Damon to Stuffy McGinnis off the 1918 club. I'll tell you what is clear. Who said this? 
the Anaheim Angels are the worst team in California. Oh, I think it was you. Oh, so just step off a little bit, son. This is why the Red Sox are going to win this series easily. They have the highest on base percentage in the American League, highest run scored, uh, highest slugging percentage. David Ortiz and Manny Ramirez both have over 40 homers and hitting over 300, yeah. more than 100 yeah, yeah, yeah. The Red Sox Do I need to go yeah. on? The Red Sox go on? can really hit. We know that. Actually, I said okay. the Dodgers were the worst team in California. I said the Angels <laughs> no, might not be the second the best team. So I was wrong, wrong, wrong. Oh, the point course. is, Michael, that the Red Sox can hit, but the Angels have their starters peaking at the right time. Bartolo Colon is finally pitching like an ace, and K-Rod, their setup guy to Percival, will pitch the most important innings of that series, well, this is, and he's the best pitcher in the series. This is not a rhetorical question. Name one pitcher better than Kurt Schilling. No. Nope. Nobody does, and that's the answer. Michael wins the argument because Kurt Schilling is going to pitch two of a possible five games. The Red Sox just have to get one other win, and they score so many runs, those Red Sox, that K-Rod and Percival may not matter, Max. Impressive skyline behind you, Wolf. Next topic. <laughs> oh, you like that? Round two. Sad sack. Sorry to see the Cubs miss the playoffs. Do have a cursed horse to ride in the National League postseason. The Astros storm into postseason as the hottest team in baseball. They close 36 and 10, including 18 straight wins at home. They'll throw Roger Clemens and 20-game winner Roy Oswalt at Atlanta in the NLDS, which makes Houston the trendy choice for the NL pennant. But the world believes that the Astros are set up for another disappointment, Max. If by disappointment you mean making it to the NLCS, then yes, they will be very disappointed in Houston this year. Three words, Michael. Clemens, Oswalt, Lidge. Clemens and Oswalt will start at least three out of the five games, and they're both the type of guys who can hand the ball to Brad Lidge in the ninth inning. Well, unfortunately, they're not starting their series at home where they won 18 straight games. It's going to be a good postseason for Houston. I I'm, I'm glad the fans got a chance to see the postseason, but if they're fortunate enough to get by the Braves, they have, they're going to run into the best team in baseball, the St. Louis Cardinals. Oh, the Cardinals might not even oh, be Michael. there, Michael. The, it, the Cardinals it, might not be there. Sure they were. The Cardinals will probably sweep the Dodgers. You heard it here first. They'll probably sweep L.A. Look, teams don't suddenly morph into someone else once they get into the postseason. You guys have overstated the problems of no, the Cardinals. No, but they're the St. Louis Cardinals are banged up, and even if they so weren't, what? they don't have a dominant starter to begin with, and it's not like they have a Brad Lidge at the end of that bullpen. They don't need a dominant starter to get by in the postseason. No one, have you been paying attention to professional sports, not just baseball, football, basketball, too? There are no more dominant teams left in baseball. There's no one to fear, Well, I don't know. Right? The Yankees have been in hat three quarters I'm of the sorry, World Michael, while the Red, while everybody thought the Cardinals would lie line up their rotation for the postseason. They were trying to figure out who was starting game one. Turned out to be Woody Williams. The best team in baseball right now Second is the card. Houston Astros. Oh. They are the scariest team in the National League. Take it from the a National League observer. He never wants to jinx the Cardinals. Next top. That's really not it. Round three. What makes Michael Vick so effective? Kellerman's expert analysis is he's the greatest player ever. Plain and simple. Like a hole. The Falcons handed the, handled the Panthers at Charlotte Sunday on only 148 yards passing and just 35 yards rushing from Vic. But a telling statistic in Atlanta's 4-0 start is Vic's performance on first and 10. With a fresh set of downs, his pass completion rate is 81% for more than 12 yards per attempt. And the world puts the Atlanta Falcons right now in the same class as the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles, Max. Look, the Eagles and Falcons have the same record, Michael, and they have a very similar point differentials. But the combined records of Eagles opponents is 8-6, and six, while the combined records of Falcons opponents is 4-11. and 11. So the Eagles are doing the same thing the Falcons are doing, but they're doing it against much stronger teams. Oh, I know what's going on here. It was a lover's quarrel this weekend. You and Michael Vick. Did you have to sit <laughs> in the couch? I can't believe you're saying ne something negative about your boy. I'm not. Of of course, they're both equal, Max. 4-0 and teams in the NFL are equal. Think about a couple of years ago when Michael Vick took the Falcons into Philadelphia. They lost that game, but the Falcons are better now. Michael Vick's a better quarterback. And they got a defensive mentality now with Jim Morey Jr. Hold on. There. The Eagles didn't have Terrell Owens, Javon Kirst, okay. or Brian Westbrook at the time, Michael. They're a much better team. Are you saying strength of schedule doesn't matter? The and Eagles they, are beating a tougher strength of schedule. Strength of schedule doesn't matter. This is not college football, But Max. when you're evaluating how they good they are. They got ducking and done now. They didn't got matter last year. The Carolina 
Panthers beat a whole lot of nobodies on their way to the Super Bowl. The Falcons are 4-0, therefore equal. And their defense, 12th overall, and they're allowing only 12 points a game, Max. Yes, I know 4-0 is the same record and therefore equal, but which team is better was the question. Next topic. Ah, uh, seems like you lost. Round four. <laughs> Kellerman considers every Monday a triumphant return from his weekend. I made it back. But his early week glory has nothing on Felix Trinidad's return to the ring after two and a half years away Saturday night against Ricardo Mayorga. Trinidad pummeled and bloodied the masochistically willing Mayorga until an eighth round knockout. And the world believes that Felix Trinidad is ready right now to avenge his knockout loss to Bernard Hopkins, Max. Felix Trinidad is my favorite fighter, Michael. I finally realized this after all of these years. But his crowd-pleasing offense is the St. Louis Rams from 2001, and Bernard Hopkins is your New England Patriots. No one thing jumps out at you as being spectacular about Hopkins, so he's underestimated. But all he does is beat you. No, it's time for Felix to take on the executioner. He's got nothing to lose, Max. And think about this. He looked better beating Mayorga than Hopkins did beating up on De La Hoya. And you know what? Hopkins is 40 years old. If he's not 40, he's going to be 40 very soon. This is the yeah, time but my, to beat him. Yeah, but Mayorga is as tough as anyone, but he's yes, not he nearly is. in Oscar De La Hoya's class. Now, Trinidad was incredibly impressive, and I suppose since he's like eight years younger than Hopkins, eventually well, he should be able to beat him. But that time ain't now, Michael. Well, look, if he play, if, if, if he fights him and he loses, fine. He can still come back and get De La Hoya a big payday there. Yeah. Either way, he's in a win-win situation. I think this is the time that, to do it. Look, that, look it, that's a good point, but he has a winnable fight with Oscar. That's a 50-50 fight. Hopkins, he probably uh, It is will time for, De, for Trinidad to beat Bernard Hopkins. All respect to Hopkins. He looked a little old against De La Hoya also. The 2001 Rams were coached by Mike Martz. Trinidad coached by his dad, Edge. Trinidad, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Tito was incredible. Incredible. I love you, Tito. I'll never front on you again. What about Michael Vick? <laughs> Instant Replay makes its IMAX return after a commercial break. Hey, Wolf, read the teleprompter like you mean it. Isn't it front of pawn? Well, no, coming up, did the Giants put a severe hurt on Brett Favre or what? The question is, did they knock the pack out of contention at the same time? And furthermore, as Auburn drives its Cadillac up the national polls, the question becomes, how high, Max? The ultimate fantasy football show. Our experts will tell you everything you need to be a powerhouse in your fantasy football league. Fridays on FSN. It will summon you. It will challenge you. It will consume you. Mortal Kombat Deception. Online for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Rated M for Mature. On the next dog, the Bounty Hunter. I always make sure I have my makeup on. Dwayne likes that. He looks a little bit better. You're a liar! Hey, we got her! Come on, come on. Don't rush me. I almost fell down the stairs. Go, go. We got badges. We got words. Come on, let's open the doors or they come down. It's right here! Up on the ground! Okay, you're under arrest. Mm. Oh, love you, Beth. Dog, the Bounty Hunter. All new episode. Check your local listings. He's got a little in him. And her. And them. Now you never quite know who it's gonna be. But they're all over. Sean from IT. Your dental hygienist. Your best friend's mother. And when you see him, it will become instantly clear that they've all got a little captain in them. Got a little captain in you. Drink responsibly. Hi, honey. How are you? Good. How are the kids? Oh, that's wonderful. No, no, I just think we're going to make an early night of it. Yeah, Daddy's so tired, he's already asleep. Uh-huh. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, good night. Kisses. <laughs> Pass to everything that is NASCAR. Serious points, do get out. Totally NASCAR. Weeknights on FSN.
best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on FSN. Time to play upon further review. Our hairy executive producer, Bill Wolf, reviews an issue that either Michael or I challenge with our red flag. Mine's right here. Michael's looks ridiculous, and he throws it like a girl. Wolf, what's up first? <laughs> Said the man who throws like a girl. Here are the circumstances. Set up for a soccer game against the Bills, heavily favored and coming off a bye week, Bill Belichick had New England ready for their record-tying 18th straight win, which was a 31-17 blowout of Buffalo at Buffalo. The Indianapolis Colts defied Kellerman's logic and beat Jacksonville on the road, and the New York Jets did just enough to go 3-0 with a win at Miami. The call on the field. The Jets are a bigger threat to the Patriots than the Indianapolis Colts. I challenge the call. See what I mean? How about See that what throw? I mean? <laughs> I was just reading Patriot Reign. And in this book I learned, in, in bookstores right now, by the way, Tom Brady is 43-12 and 12 as a starter with two Super Bowl wins. There is no true threat to the Patriots. But if you got to pick one, how about the Colts, who are a yard away from beating them last year, Max? No, 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 no. The call should stand. Michael, I also read Patriot Reign. Excellent book. Very Thank good you. read. A page turner. I finished it this morning, in fact. Who is most like the Patriots, Michael? Who's most like your Patriots between the Colts and the Jets? Who has that super organized coach that guys would run through a wall for? Who? The Jets, Herm Edwards, oh. just like Belichick. And who's most like Tom Brady? Chad Pennington. No one's like Tom Brady. Come on. And Herm Edwards, you know his mentor is? Tony, Tony Dungy, Dungy from the should. Colts. Upon further review, the call is overturned. Is overturned. If you're going to pick gonna a threat to the Patriots, the Patriots, it is the Colts, who were impressive at Tennessee, at Jacksonville, and thump those Green Bay Packers. The Jets, we'll wait and see. Sleeping on Pennington. Next topic. Sleeping upon. Here are the circumstances. The Kansas City Chiefs have taken up early season residence on the proverbial schneid. 0-3 heading for Baltimore and Monday Night Football. The Chiefs are 16th in the NFL in offense. That's not as good as we thought. And 25th in defense, which adds up to being six-point underdogs to the Ravens and thus six-point favorites to go 0-4. The call on the field. The Chiefs are the most disappointing team in the NFL to this point. Let me work on this throw. I challenge the call. <laughs> How about that one? The most disappointing team in the NFL is the Green Bay Packers. How are they 1-3? How they lost two games at home, losing to the Bears and losing to the Giants. And I'm also disappointed they didn't take care of their backup quarterback situation in the offseason. Doug Peterson yesterday, that was heartbreaking. No, come on. The, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Dick Vermeil offense, just like St. Louis. Oh, wait till the defense catches up. That's all we heard about in the offseason. The defense is going to get better in the preseason. They have the eye of the tiger and all this stuff. Michael, this is a team that won nine straight games last year. They can't buy a win this year. Well, Max, we knew Kansas City's defense was going to be bad. Their major acquisition was a defensive coordinator, not somebody on the field. And did you see them last year in the playoffs? Upon further Kansas review, I mean, I mean, the call the Colts? stands. And Michael, you'll and Michael, be charged a timeout. timeout. Max, you win the point. The, the point. Chiefs, Chiefs offense, offense is what's so disappointing. So they should be able to run the ball. One note on Green Bay. They traded holdout defensive back Mike McKenzie to New Orleans, but that won't help them this year, Michael. Next topic. Here are the circumstances. A couple of SEC contests on Saturday <laughs> amounted to elimination games from the national title picture. Georgia finally uncorked the sort of performance their preseason hype had promised with a 45-16 pounding of LSU. In Knoxville, the slept-upon Auburn Tigers oh, applied crying. their own version of a butt-whomping on Tennessee, a 34-10 conference road win. The call on the field, Auburn has an inside track on the SEC title and the national championship. I challenge the call and Bill Wolf's ability to read the prompter. <laughs> Come on, Georgia has a, con a win in their conference over South Carolina on the road. Then they just beat the defending national champions, Michael. They destroyed LSU. Therefore, no, why is everyone sleeping on Georgia? Oh, Max, I'm so glad to hear that Georgia beat LSU. So did Auburn. Auburn is the team in 2004 that we expected them to be in 2003. Remember this name, Max, a guy like you likes to talk a lot of trash, Junior Rose Green, but unlike you, he actually No, let's take, LSU as a, <laughs> let's take LSU as a measuring point, Michael. Let's, okay. let's measure these two teams. Georgia whipped them at home. Auburn beat them by one point on a bad call at LSU, home. LSU is not even the benchmark. Auburn is so Upon good, further so review, down. the call... Stands. Max will be charged a timeout. Michael wins the argument. We'll all settle this when Auburn hosts Georgia, which is Auburn's only tough game, and their road win in the conference 
at Tennessee, Max. Auburn's tough. What are you going to say when Georgia wins? That's what I want. When Georgia beats Auburn in Auburn, what are you going to say? I'm going to say sorry. It's a rhetorical question. Time to take on yet another comer. Wolf, who dares tangle with me, the devil's advocate? Well, coming up, are Terrell Owens and the Philadelphia Eagles the best team in football? Ask Fox Football's number one guy, Max. Come for you. Do you understand me? Oh my God! Hold on! Oh! The day after tomorrow. Own the DVD October 12th. Now we'll be fine. You can't script October. Red Sox five defensive ends away. The Division Series on Fox begins in prime time this week. They know which tires belong on your machine. They know what the writing on the side will mean. At Big O Tires, they love tires. They love wheels. And most of all, they love helping people like you save money on tires and wheels. For the Big O Tire store nearest you, go to BigO.com. For a reputation you can ride on Big O Tire. Besides having good horsepower, Volkswagens have plenty of low-end torque. Oh. Watch what happens as you pass this truck. Okay. Whoa. You see, acceleration kicks in at a lower RPM. Horsepower does the rest. Go ahead. Wind it up again. Okay. <laughs> so cool. I know. Okay. Yeah. We could probably wind it down a little bit now. Want to find out what makes a Volkswagen a Volkswagen? Come drive it. You'll get it. play devil's advocate wolf whom i've taken on today max you're down five two and being destroyed and now representing the world it's fox nfl analyst troy aikman max uh welcome to the show troy well thank you max pay no attention to that funny looking guy he's uh, <laughs> a little bit ridiculous listen you saw two teams that who seemed to be going in opposite directions yesterday green bay and the new york giants how serious are the packers problems going forward well, I think they're pretty serious. I mean, anytime you lose uh, at home, and they have not yet won at home, they're 0-2 this year, and going back over their last 12 games, they're 6-6, six and six, so that's cause for concern. Defensively, they're having some problems, a lot of injuries, particularly in their secondary. They're not slowing a lot of people down. Teams are able to run the football on them, and, uh, and right now, with Brett Favre banged up and injured, you've got to wonder what his health's going to be like. So, yeah, they've got some problems. The Colts, they beat the Jags on the road to tie for the division lead. Is this the year they finally overtake the Pats? They almost beat them week one as the class of the AFC. Uh, Indianapolis offensively, they can score on anybody. They've shown that. They've played great defensive teams early in the season already and put up some big numbers. But their defense, what they have done a good job of defensively is they've been able to make plays at the end of games when they've had to to win. Uh, but that will only take you so far. You can't allow teams to go up and down the field. And, and I really believe that you have to have good offensive teams in order to win championships. But when you look at the teams that have won Super Bowls over the years, they've had good defensive teams as well. You're saying the Colts defense is too soft to win it all, Troy. I'm saying they got to get better. <laughs> all right. I know the Pats have won 18 straight games stretching back to last year. But so far, the Eagles, the way they're manhandling good teams, to me, look like the best team in football. Am I right? 
I wouldn't disagree with that. I think offensively, uh, I, I've never seen Donovan McNabb playing with the confidence that he has. And, you know, how much of that is attributed to Terrell Owens? How much is it that the other players around him have elevated their play? And, you know, I don't know really what the answer to that is. I, I, you know, everyone knew that Terrell Owens was going to have some kind of impact on this team, but I never dreamed that they would have the chemistry that they have already this early in their relationship. They're, sometimes it takes years for a quarterback and receiver to develop that. That's been impressive. Defensively, uh, they're always going to be aggressive. They're always going to put pressure on the opposing, uh, opposing team's quarterback. I think they're well coached. Uh, I would certainly expect them, like in years past, to be there at the end. The Falcons. Michael Vick. M listen to this stat for a second, this arbitrary stat that I came up with okay. here. Troy. Since September 22nd, 2002, Michael Vick is, the Falcons are 17-6-1 when Vick plays, 2-10 and 10 when he doesn't. This is the first guy I know about in the history of football who changes the fortunes of a team that much, and I say it makes him the best player in the league. Am I wrong? Well, you know, you can certainly make an argument for him, which you certainly have. Uh, you know, Jeremy Shockey, that team's 0-8 when he hasn't started. So then, you, you know, on your basis, <laughs> you could use the same argument for him being Troy, the best Ixnay player. Troy, on the at stay. You're making me look <laughs> bad over here. But, yeah. you know, I think what's interesting with Atlanta is you're right. A year ago, Michael Vick was out of the lineup, and that team struggled. And this year, they've won. Michael Vick has struggled in some of those games that they've won, but their defense is playing much better. Last year, they couldn't stop anybody, so I think that's been the biggest turnaround. Troy Aikman, <clears> thank <throat> you for joining us today on IMAX, and I hate you for bringing up that shocking stat. <laughs> okay. You made a mockery of my Vic stat. <laughs> hey, thanks, Max. Thanks for coming on. All right, Wolf, he provided a little context to my arbitrary Vic stat, exposing me for the fraud that I am. I don't even want to hear it from you. Well, Max, Troy Aikman is the best in the business, and you, sir, are also in the business. 6-2 world, I got Max. you, Max. I'm in the business with Troy Aikman. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm about to take you, the viewer, on next to the knockout round. Wolf, let me hear it. Well, coming up, did LaDainian Tomlinson and San Diego expose Tennessee's critical lack of defensive supply? Max? <laughs> You're watching FSN. On the next dog, the bounty hunter. I always make sure I have my makeup on to him like that he looks a little bit better. You're a liar! Hey, we got her! Come on, come on. Don't rush me, I almost fell down the stairs. Go, go. We got badges, we got warrants. Come on, let's open the doors or they come down. It's right here! Up on the ground! Ugh. Okay, you're under arrest. Mm -hmm. oh, love you, Beth. Dog, the bounty hunter. All new episode. Check your local listings. I put a spell on you. Because you're mine. I put a spell on you. <laughs> What's up? If you have great credit, shouldn't you be treated like you do? At eLoan, you are. With cash out refinancing from eLoan, we process your loan differently. From application to instant decision to appraisal, we do it online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender or appraisal fees. You get your cash out fast in as few as 12 days. You've worked hard for your great credit. The difference is, at eLoan, you're rewarded for it. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-22. The Charles Schwab Cup Championship from October 19th to the 24th at the Sonoma Golf Club. For tickets, visit charlesschwabcupchampionship.com or call 1-800-868-7563.
with expert analysis, racing insights, and the latest reports from the winner's circles. Your all-access pass to everything that is NASCAR. Totally NASCAR, next on FSN. You're watching FSN. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Okay, America, it's the knockout round. If you beat me, Bill Wolf reads my hate mail. But if I win, Wolf has to read an email explaining how I successfully combine encyclopedic sports knowledge with boyish charm. <laughs> Wolf, you're the judge. What do you have to say? Don't you mean boyish sports knowledge, Max? You're down <laughs> six to only a miracle saves you today. Michael? You don't belong in the same field as Troy Aikman. Yeah, to email me, log on to foxsports.com on MSN, keyword I, comma, Max. Oh, you don't belong in the same field. Boy, that was clever, Michael. <laughs> in Nashville, Tennessee writes, the McNairless Titans got pasted by the Chargers. I'm sticking to my prediction that the Titans will be in the Super Bowl. I'm sticking to my prediction that they won't be. I'll give you that. Richard in Chicago writes, the Cubs choked away the NL wild card down the stretch. Let's put this curse talk to bed because the Cubs just plain stink. Look at that roster. Let's not put it to bed. It's time for you to wake up and smell the coffee. Nah, They're there's cursed. no curse. They just stink. How about Oakland? Talk Every about Oakland. Every year for 100 years? Talk about your A's. <laughs> Lester in Dallas writes, Emmett Smith rushed for 127 yards and threw for a touchdown. Let's face it. The old guy still has it. If by it you mean one good game every three seasons, then sure, yeah. <laughs> Lefty in Los Angeles writes, Tiger Woods is now dropped to number three in the world. That's almost as bad as being the number three guy on your own show, Max. <laughs> what are you saying, that Holly's the best guy, Bill? That would mean that you look like number two. Oh, that's hilarious, Max. That, I'm just, as a matter of fact, I think that's the losing blow. So boyish you saying, charm. You were saying something about being clever. Was that clever? Was that clever, Max? Please. The glare on your braces is terribly distracting, Michael. All right, well, what's my punishment? You lost, so it's hate mail, Max. Al in Oklahoma writes, quote, Max, you have to be the biggest imbecile to ever appear on my television. That's sad considering I've bought every Mike Tyson fight. You owe me about $1,000 from the therapy sessions I've needed to get the ringing sound of your ignorant statements out of my head. Bill Wolf is the most scrupulous judge ever. And Michael Holly is the greatest sports mind of my generation. You are just Eddie Munster. End quote. <laughs> Minus the beautiful cousin Marilyn, of course. What generation is that? Generation Z? That's going to do it for my co-host Michael Holly and that other guy, Bill Wolf. I, Max, say tune in tomorrow at 6 p.m. and late night for more of me. Well, that must be a very sh small generation. Oh, you can't even talk. <laughs> exactly. I come around once every time. His right foot got into victory lane, but his mouth may have put him in the doghouse. We'll tell you the fate that looms for Dale Jr. And while some top 10 contenders fizzled, drivers outside the chase are making a case for some pub of their own. It's Talladega the morning after, next on Totally NASCAR. <laughs> credit for having a fast race car, but I'm not sure he gets enough credit for being able to drive it. Welcome to Totally NASCAR. I'm Chris Devota. Despite Talladega and season win number five, the big story regarding Dale Earnhardt Jr. is a four-letter word. The cost of Jr.'s vocabulary choice in his post-race interview has yet to be determined. Larry McReynolds is here to discuss. But first, Monday's headlines. Ken Schrader and the 49 BAM team are looking ahead to 2005. David Heider has been named crew chief on the Schwann's Home Service Dodge starting this week. Heider comes over to BAM after a four-and-a-half-year stint with Petty Enterprises. Donnie Richardson had been the interim crew chief. And NASCAR goes retro. What many suspected for weeks was officially announced today. The Dodge Charger will return to the track in 2005. The Charger was used at NASCAR from 1966 to 1977, during which time it visited Victory Lane 124 times. The Charger will replace the Intrepid, which has been used since Dodge returned to the sport in 2001. The big question heading into Sunday's race. Well, actually, there were two big questions. Who had the restrictor plate edge, DEI or Hendrick? 
And would any top 10 contenders hit a pothole on their path to the Nextel Cup? We go to the world's fastest super speedway where it didn't take long for the field three go three wide behind pole sitter Joe Nemechek. Always treacherous in the pits at Talladega. Kevin Harvick locks up his front brakes and hits his Jackman. The Jackman was okay, though. 46 laps to go. Hermie Sadler tags Jeff Green. Green goes spinning and collects a helpless Jeremy Mayfield. Then 11 to go. Some leaders pit, some stay out. But Bobby Labonte and Sterling Marlin crash in the confusion. All the leaders pit while some take fuel only. Spotter Steve Neal tells the A crew to take two tires. And that was the right move. Dale Jr. slides by Harvick with two laps to go. Last lap, Greg Biffle slams the wall out of turn two and collects Casey Kane. Jr., though, would hold on to take the checkered flag while Elliott Sadler, watch this, he flies across the stripe and lands on all four tires. Jim Noble caught up with a very happy little E in victory lane. All right, thank you. It is never boring for these guys. All right, Dale Earnhardt Jr., 11th on a restart with six laps to go. No worries at that point? Oh, I was worried. I mean, you got no guarantees uh, that your car can be capable of getting to the front. I did have newer tires on the right side than the guys in front of me, and that was the big, uh, that was the big equalizer, I think, in, in getting us to the lead. Talk about the decision to take two tires. You know, you're 24th at one point. Everybody had to come in for gas, but you guys seem confident that those two right sides, you still had plenty of time to get back up front. Yeah, we did. Uh, we, you know, a lot of guys behind us got tires too. We just, um, you know, made some great calls on pit road, had some great pit stops, and that and, uh, yeah, makes it a lot easier on a driver. All right, Dale Earnhardt Jr. home again here in Victory Lane in Talladega, Alabama. Back to you. Thanks, Jim. Dale Jr. has now finished first or second in his last seven Talladega races. Kurt Busch, the only other cup contender on this list. Dale Jarrett is in the top five for the second straight week. Brendan Gaughan is there for the first time ever. He and Kevin Harvick both satisfied with their day. Harvick had the lead late but could not hold off Jr. Had a fast race car and put ourselves in position and had a chance. And I knew Robbie was behind us and, and we, we had already... All three of us had a plan before the race to, you know, do what we could to work together. And um, I knew the only person that was going to be able to get by us was the eight because he'd get the most help and, and uh, had one of the best cars. So got by us, and what do you do? Shane and, and Doug and I, we literally said, what do you want to do? And, and we said, the Kodak team's not racing for a championship, we're running for wins right now, and had nothing to lose at that point. Stay out, try to be in the lead. I, I've seen it a few times and tried to block them, but didn't want to get hit, so... Let him go, caught back up, and uh, just great job. Gone moves up two spots to 30th in the standings. The top 10 also does a little shake and bake. Dale Earnhardt Jr. moves into the lead for now. We'll have to see if he loses language points. Mark Martin, Matt Kenseth, Tony Stewart, and Ryan Newman all improve. Jeff Gordon, Elliot Sadler, and Jimmy Johnson lose ground. Jeremy Mayfield remains 10th. Kurt Busch is still second after a third straight top five. At the end, it came down to pitch strategy on who could make it on fuel, and this is a great finish for our Sharpie Ford. Dale Jr. is the toughest guy to beat here, and then the Chevrolets ran pretty strong. Uh, 31 to 29 was good, but this was probably a good point state for us just to survive this wild card. It was tough. Still ahead, Todd Bodine talks about the key to his first career win in the Craftsman Truck Series. Plus, Larry McReynolds is here. We will break down race number three in the chase for the Nextel Cup, and up next, how Jeff Gordon fell to 19th after running up front most of the day. Totally NASCAR on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by YJ Stinger Extreme Energy Drink. Catch the buzz, feel the sting. The best is yet to come and babe, won't it be fine? You think you've seen the sun, but you ain't seen it shine. Wherever business takes you, Best Western is there. Best Western, the world's largest hotel chain. Right now, you can save up to 50% and earn double points or miles. Visit bestwestern.com for details. Hi, honey. How are you? Good. How are the kids? Oh, that's wonderful. No, no. I just think we're going to make an early night of it. Yeah, Daddy's so tired, he's already asleep. Uh-huh. Okay, sweetheart. Okay, good night. Kisses. <laughs> Let's 
Jam Sports Show, period. Weeknights on FSN. The Tundra Double Cab. Where's Larry? Larry! I'll get him. With four full-size doors. Where's Rick? Looking for you. Uh -oh. I'll go. Come find him. Who's Larry? I'm Larry. Where's Bob? You're Bob. Who am I getting? Okay, where's Jimmy? You get him. You get him. I got him last I'll time. Go. I'll go. Hold on. Where's Rick? I'll, I'll go. go. I'll go. I'm going. <laughs> It's the big, tough truck with plenty of room for you and all your friends. Let's go. If you're sure that's such a good idea. Um, I'll go. I'm going. I'll go. If your car is sluggish or you sometimes use a lower quality gasoline, pour a bottle of Tecron Concentrate Fuel System Cleaner in your tank. Then fill it with gas. Get the performance you paid for with Tecron Concentrate. Welcome back. The Talladega YJ Stinger Extreme Energy Drink Sting of the Week. Deja vu, sort of, for Elliot Sadler. He goes airborne late in the race, flipping completely over. But at least he doesn't tumble end over end like his wild ride a year ago. He's making a run there at the end and uh, trying to get past the zero, and he blocked me pretty hard. And I had to hit him too hard. And when I did, it kind of turned my front end to the left, and I spun out. And I got in the grass and went, oh, God, not this again. And it looked, took off. I said, oh, Lord, not this again. And then, uh, but it was okay. It, it, everything did its job again. But not half as bad as last year. It was just a few tumbles and everything was fine. Elliot Sadler took the checkers in 22nd. Up ahead, fellow cup contender Tony Stewart was sixth. Great day for MBV. Joe Nemechek and Scott Riggs score top 11 finishes. Casey Mears, Robbie Gordon, and Ward Burton complete this list. Ricky Rudd is 12th for the second straight week. Jeff Burton led some laps. Jamie McMurray is 17th. Ahead of him, you see him in red. More chasers. Ryan Newman and Roush teammates Mark Martin and Matt Kenseth, who were glad to get out of Talladega unscathed. Yeah, I mean, we finished, um, you know, after seeing that stupid kind of stuff. I mean, your goal really here is to be able to walk to the, walk to the rental car after the race, so it's uh, pretty stupid, all the stuff that goes on out there. Just has us in a bad position. Just uh, hope everybody's all right after the day. I don't think that was a great race. Uh, <laughs> might have been a great show, but uh, we could have been doing that on a figure eight or a demo derby there. But we didn't wreck, though. And uh, some of them did. So uh, we got out of this one without, uh, you know, without uh, trouble. And maybe we can go and do some real racing for a while. While Martin and Kenseth gained ground in the point standings, Hendrick Motorsports lost a ton. And remember, it was Hendrick Cars that finished 1-2 at Daytona in July and a Hendrick car with Jeff Gordon that won the Talladega race in April. But this time, not pitting meant not winning for Gordon. Just pretty much had to bring it home best we could there at the end and avoid wrecks, and we barely did that. So, uh, you know, unfortunate, but we're still third points. Uh, lost some, but, you know, got plenty to, to gain him back. Still to come, a nail biter in the Craftsman Trucks produces a series first time winner. And up next, Larry Mack joins us to talk Talladega when Totally NASCAR rolls on. Here you go, boys. Here you go. Get the set. Got the set? Go find him, boys. Introducing the award winning Outlander Max. It can handle extra tough conditions and one or two riders thanks to its exclusive convertible seat rack system. I guess someone's got a long walk back. Oh. Guess so. Don't get stuck with anything less. Bombardier ATV. Follow no one. Now with three years of free extended coverage. XM Satellite Radio. Over 100 digital channels you'll never want to be without. Including the only 24-hour NASCAR radio channel. Beyond AM, Beyond FM. XM Satellite Radio. Well, Larry's been tinkering with cars since we were kids. Tinkering? I am a serious car guy. Oh, yeah? Remember when you seriously fixed Dad's wagon? Hey, I was 14. Anyway, Larry just loves Parts Plus. Serious pros. He's a regular there. At my house, we don't have much time for tinkering. So we just take the car to the Parts Plus Car Care Center. We know we can trust them to do the job right. You don't trust me? Hey, I love you like a brother. I am your brother.
introducing mercury mariner save yourself the hassle get to October 3rd will not be a day Jimmy Johnson remembers fondly. First trouble on pit road as the 48 would make contact with the 9 of Casey Kane. Then this, Johnson's crew has to push him back to the garage after his car overheats, knocking him out of the race and dropping him five spots in the standings. Had some contact on pit road, and I'm not sure uh, if that hurt the air duct. <clears throat> it wouldn't let air get inside, cool the radiator, radiator down. But either way, the car got real hot. Um, the stall Sunday got real hot. I'm not sure why. And cooked an engine so we'll just take it from here I mean you know you can only be so upset because we work our butts off we do everything that we can and uh, you know stuff happens lady luck wasn't on our side hasn't been on our side a little bit but you know that we can do with it welcome back we are joined by Larry McReynolds and Larry we just heard from Jimmy Johnson there uh, he is the next driver to join that dubious group of guys that used up their mulligans that's exactly right so with that said we will break the color chart out week two now a whole new round with new colors it yep, looks like three down seven to go this is after Talladega we have had some color changes on the color chart <laughs> but right now we pretty much have these five guys here still in green these question marks beside junior points lead we'll talk about that in just a little bit but my little purple stars here what that basically means is of our 10 contenders six of those guys have used a mulligan if you look here jeremy mayfield with two pretty much that's the reason he is in complete red 280 points out remember the point spread after week two was only 157 but now it's 280 so pretty much jeremy and, and he was a victim in both situations but i think he's pretty much out of the equation now we did have one color change the other direction Tony Stewart, he was ninth in the points last week. He moved up with another sixth place finish to six. I had put Tony back in green. He's almost a race behind, but I just believe Tony, we're fixing to hit some race tracks that he really runs good at. Remember, he won Chicago, which is a sister track to Kansas, so I've kind of brought Tony back in the equation. What this dotted line right here means is everyone below this line, they are more than a race behind. So pretty much that's how it stands. We have four guys mm -hmm. that have not used a mulligan. What this group here is depending on that sooner or later these guys will have a star by their name that they use their mulligan up. Now, the other part of the equation, remember the race for 11th, I think now, contrary to last week, it's down to a four-man race. Jamie McMurray kind of had a, an off week, finished 17th. And what happened is Kevin Harvick with his second place finish, Dale Jarrett with another top five finish, which is actually another color change. Dale is back fully green. All these guys bidding for that 11th place, $1 million. I think for the most part, we have a three to four man race. Casey Kane, 143 back. He has no more mulligans left. So that's it for week three of 10. Okay, you mentioned those question marks by Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah, yesterday, Sunday, he won over $300,000 by winning the race at Talladega, but he actually could have lost a lot more than that, right? Well, there were some post-race comments on national television, and you know what? I hate it for Junior because, once again, that race team was so strong yesterday, and I think in victory lane, he was just very emotional. He was talking about how many times his dad had won at Talladega, but he let a word slip out that shouldn't have, and I think NASCAR has already set the precedence with Johnny Sauter earlier in the year, with Ron Hornaday, with a word he said, I think as much as I hate it for Dale Earnhardt Jr., I think NASCAR has no choice but probably to levy a fine and take probably 25 points away from Dale Earnhardt Jr. as they did those other two drivers. And I, and I hate it for those guys because they had such a great race car. Hopefully, though, no matter what happens, if they do take 25 points away, that won't be the difference in winning the championship or not. Remember, 25 points for Jamie McMurray taken away earlier in the season was the difference in him making the top 10 and not making the top 10. Well, we do have some good things to talk about with Dale Jr. We're going to do that coming up as well as emails. And there was a lot of good things there about that eight car yesterday. There was a lot of good things. That's right. So don't go anywhere more with Larry Mack coming up. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. now halfway to equaling his father's total, those 10 wins at the Talladega Super Speedway. We will be right back. The Ultimate Fantasy Football Show. Our experts will tell you everything you need to be a powerhouse in your fantasy football league. Fridays on FSN. Yeah. 
Cat 450 Automatic 4x4 from Yamaha. Now get a $400 worn winch for just $69.95 on select models. So Another fresh idea from Papa John's. Our new spicy Italian pizza. Loaded with pepperoni and Italian sausage. Now buy a large spicy Italian pizza for $13.99 and get a DVD movie. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Do you talk more about your car than your girlfriend? Is hitting a puddle your worst nightmare? Does a swirl in your paint ruin your whole day? I'm Barry McGuire, and if this is you, you're car crazy, and you're going to love our next generation tech wax. It eliminates fine scratches and swirls while creating crystal clear reflections that make your paint literally explode with color. Serious car care for car crazy people, only from McGuire's. Advanced Auto Parts. You know that your car needs regular oil and filter changes. That's why we're ready in advance with brands you trust at ready-to-go low prices. So bring it on. We're ready in advance. Yeah, but now. Hey, sweet thing, need to boost some energy? <laughs> Try some YJ Stinger. Hey, slugger, need to improve your performance? Take a swing with the sting. Pounding punch, enraged raspberry, or sinful citrus. No metal or medicine aftertaste. You're going to feel the stink. This pounded punch is a grand slam. And this sugar-free enraged raspberry is delicious. Why, Why Jay Stinger, Stinger made by Stacker Juju, the world's strongest bat burner. Catch the buzz. Feel the sting. You are the man. Totally NASCAR on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Parts Plus, America's family of auto parts stores and service centers. Welcome back. Continuing our chat with Larry McReynolds. And Larry, we've been talking about who else, Dale Earnhardt Jr., coming off his Talladega win. Win number five. Now, you don't win five times at Talladega just on sheer luck, do you? No, absolutely not. I mean, that group, they have had their act together at the restrictor plate racetracks for, for so many years now. And some interesting comments that I heard about Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 18 yesterday, Tony Uri Sr., late in the race, made a comment that we know we've had a small advantage at these type of racetracks over the last few years, but the competition has caught up. And even with them going to victory lane yesterday for the second time in four restrictor plate races in 2004, he said, we know we've got some work to do this winter to try to get that small advantage back. But I think Dale Jarrett had such a classic statement about Dale Earnhardt Jr. yesterday and winning that race. He said so much credit goes to the equipment, to the cars and to the restrictor plate engines, but he said, let me tell you something, Dale Earnhardt Jr. don't get near enough credit for what he does in that race car, that just anybody maybe couldn't get in that race car and do what he does in it. And to, to me, the interesting thing now, remember, we're still waiting on this fine maybe to come down. As he's 13 points ahead, if indeed they take 25 points from him, he will only be, he'll be in second, but he'll only be 12 points behind. And to me, this week is the big hurdle for that 18, because this is a type of racetrack they have struggled so much at. Remember, at a mile and a half track earlier in the season at Las Vegas, they went to the garage area and parked the car and changed the setup on it. But I did hear they went and tested last week at Kansas. They were very happy. I think if that race team is solid this week, with or without the penalty or fine, I think that could be the team to beat for this championship. All right, that's right, Junior and his team did go to Kansas to test. That's where we head next. But next on this show, we head to email. Oh, great. Are you ready? And of course, it is a question about Dale Jr. Comes to us from Keene, New Hampshire. How come Dale Earnhardt Jr. didn't go a lap down when the caution came out while he was in the pits? Well, that's a pretty simple answer. Remember, he was right there at the lead pack of the field. And it's an over two and a half mile racetrack. Regardless if you're on the racetrack or on pit road, when the caution comes out, the field is frozen. So right then, they were on pit road, headed to make a routine pit stop, so that's how they stayed on the lead lap. But even without the field being frozen by the old rules, at that big of a racetrack, you could still come to pit road, change two tires, and make it off before the field come back around. Okay, so we have to wait and see if NASCAR's going to levy those points or what kind of fine they're going to give to Dale Jr. But what about some of the teams that may have some fines or some penalties coming as far as spoiler infractions? Well, we're waiting on that just like we are the Dale Earnhardt Jr. infraction, and it has to do with the rear spoiler. Now, NASCAR monitors the rear spoiler size at all the racetracks, but they really pay close attention at the restrictor plate racetracks like Daytona and Talladega because, like the restrictor plate, that's one of the items that can make you run fast or run slower. And they really monitor not only the size, but the angle. And with Casey Kane, Tommy Ball, and the nine car, there was a slight infraction prior to qualifying, and with Greg Biffle and his crew chief, Doug Richard, there was an infraction yesterday in race day. So I'm sure when it comes to that rear spoiler, 
there'll be some fines levied against those guys, too. Very big at Talladega. Our next email is about the Talladega race. Steve in Cincinnati, Ohio writes, Hey, Larry, why didn't NASCAR throw a caution on the last lap Sunday at Talladega? Well, thank you, NASCAR. I mean, I was a little surprised they didn't either, but the, what I was so impressed with, that wreck was at the back of the field. There was no one behind those cars. Darrell Waltrip and I have been saying all along, when the white flag comes out, we still don't want to sacrifice safety. Race back to the checkered flag, and for all the conspiracists out there that think they are favoring Dale Earnhardt Jr., there's a prime example that they're not because they could have thrown the caution and declared that eight car the winner, but they had to race all the way back to the finish line. Okay, we're running out of time, but you had a good point you wanted to make about the racing we saw at Talladega. Well, for the people that don't like restrictor plate racing, we know certainly a lot of drivers and a lot of teams don't like it, but yesterday we had 47 lead changes, and that was at the start-finish line because that's the only place they monitor them. It probably was triple that number if you monitored them all the way around the racetrack. And just to show you how significant that number is, that's only one less lead change than we have had the last three races combined at Richmond, Loudoun, and Dover. So uh, for all the people that don't like Daytona and Talladega, you should have watched yesterday. They didn't need seats in the grandstands because everybody stood up the entire race. Great job, Larry. A lot of numbers we got in on this show. How about that? And we're not we done yet. Numbers. Talladega pole sitter Joe Nemechek led the first lap of Sunday's race. It was the only lap he would lead as eight drivers would get on point for just one lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr., of course, led the most, leading 78 circuits as 20 drivers in all would lead at one time during the race. That's six off the track record, and that makes 20 our Parts Plus number of the day. If you have great credit, shouldn't you be treated like you do? At eLoan, you are. With cash out refinancing from eLoan, we process your loan differently. From application to instant decision to appraisal, we do it online. That costs less, so you get a great rate with no lender or appraisal fees. You get your cash out fast in as few as 12 days. You've worked hard for your great credit. The difference is, at eLoan, you're rewarded for it. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-22. Steel Outdoor Power Equipment is the premium brand with an affordable price. Right now, get the BT55 gas-powered blower for just $169.95. It's perfect for homeowners. Or try the MS170 chainsaw, which has many features found on our pro models, now just $179.95. Steel Outdoor Power Equipment is available only at servicing steel retail. To find the dealer near you, call 1-800-GO-STEEL. Put the yellow pages under saws or visit steelusa.com. It's time to think inside the box. Juicy beef, two kinds of beans, tomatoes, onions, peppers, preservative free. It's all inside. Stag chili is the chili chili lovers love. Coming through, coming through. Coming through, people. Coming through. I'm opening him up. <laughs> I wanted to try that new Thai place on Main. Welcome back. The streak is over for Ted Musgrave, that is. Musgrave's streak of Craftsman Truck Series wins at the California Speedway ends at three as Todd Bodine, driving in just his fourth race with the 30 team, picks up the first Truck Series win of his career. Bodine edged Musgrave at the line after both drivers avoided a crash on the final lap Saturday in the America Racing Wheels 200. Bodine passed Musgrave with seven laps to go and avoided a Kelly Sutton spin right in front of them as they came out of turn four heading to the checkered flag. Jack Sprague finished third and David Starr was fourth. Points leader Bobby Hamilton finished fifth Saturday night. He pushes his points lead to 56 over Dennis Setzer, who was ninth. Bodine led 28 laps on the night and becomes the second driver to win in a Toyota this season.
course, this Toyota Tundra was just incredible to drive. Uh, all I had to be careful is just not overdrive the corner, and the thing would just about drive itself. And uh, I'm, I'm happy for these guys. You can tell they, they've worked hard for this. Uh, a lot of late nights. Uh, guys back at the shop, good job. Congratulations to Todd for that big win, and join us Tuesday for the show when we visit with Bodine from the 30 shop. We will also catch up with John Andretti, who has news about his driving plans for 2005, and we'll go along with Kerry Earnhardt's team at Talladega for this week's Pit Road Heat. We love Pit Road Heat. Well, that's our time tonight. We will see you again tomorrow for more Totally NASCAR. Until then, and as always, have a great evening. Come for you. Do you understand me? Oh my God! Hold on! Oh! The day after tomorrow. Own the DVD October 12th. No, it'll be fine. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? Wherever business takes you, Best Western is there. Best Western, the world's largest hotel chain. Right now, you can save up to 50% and earn double points or miles. Visit bestwestern.com for details. This is the best damn sports show, period. Terrell Owens. Powerful. Graceful. The perfect physical specimen. If you always dreamed about having a body like T.O., well, your dreams are about to come true with the Terrell Owens exercise video. Let T.O. help you crunch those abs with his patented end zone sit-ups. Strengthen your wrists with T.O.'s pom-pom power aerobics. And work those quads with T.O.'s run to the Dallas Cowboy star on the 50-yard line, hold out your arms, and stand still. I've been on the T.O. workout for two weeks. And look at these results. The Terrell Owens exercise video. Because to be honest, you don't have to be in that great a shape to beat the Bears. It's the world's greatest late-night sports show. The best damn sports show, period. Tonight. The G-Men took the farm out of the pack. Our weekly talk to the Strahan on the giant steps in New York. Manning continues his strides towards greatness. I've always argued that quarterback is the hardest position in sports. Chuck Norris puts our guys in position to earn some black belts. Who will be wearing the champion's belt this postseason? A.J. Prasinski and Kevin Kennedy break down the hunt in October. Will October bring champagne dreams for LA Dodger owner Frank McCourt shares the wealth. So get your clippers ready and your game face on. No showboating here. The best damn sports show, period, is working you out right now. minutes. Great crew assembled up here once again today. Look Ooh. who's joining us AJ. for the next few days. AJ. From the San Francisco AJ. Giants catcher, A.J. Pierzynski. Oh, by the way, Brian Cox, Cox 
what did you ask me for? You wanted a smart watch. I want the smart Your watch. Smart watch. Thank you, baby. It to me Thank for our, uh, at the contest. How low did you go? Dot com it is this week. Thank and you, you can keep track of how the Giants are doing in the playoffs. Well, oh, we're oh, right there with the dude. Cubs. Oh, right there with the Cubs. Oh, that's true. That's <laughs> On Friday, true. you were talking about the Cubs. Oh. We're going to be right there with them. Yeah, that's true. All right, but yeah, AJ, a it was a tough weekend. Don't I got to admit, I was I was at a birthday party on Saturday. I get home. And I, I pick it up right after Hermanson had given up a hit and a walk. You guys are up 3 nothing <laughs> in the ninth inning. If you win the game, you Do close we to within one. How ever were you, Chris? Because uh, the last birthday party you went to, you almost threw into the pool. That's true. Do we true. have to go through this? <laughs> Do we have to go step by step through Yeah, this? we do. Well, uh, what's the matter, Sally? <laughs> I'm choking. Yeah. Uh, hey, Hermanson gave up this, uh, this walk to Kesop Choi and walked in their first run. What are you thinking at this point? Uh... Please let someone hit into a double play. <laughs> well, I don't know, you know, because the catcher had to reach all the way across. Right. So, but you look, you were hoping tough. for a double play. You almost got one that ended the game here. But uh, Cody Ransom, he's a rookie, right? Yes, he is. Oh. And uh, okay. I just, I mean, I understand why he's in the game. He's our defensive guy, our defensive replacement. What happened there? Well, that's uh, a great he hit it out of the park, and uh, by that time I was already inside, and I couldn't watch it anymore. <laughs> Seriously, what? I mean, because you had been taken out of the game. What? I was out of the game in the bottom of the eighth with two outs. I got double switch for because I hit into a double play. Imagine that. But yeah. uh, so you're sitting in the in the clubhouse. I was. Or? I was actually was in and out. I kept changing places because when things are going bad, dude, you got to change places. You got to move around, switch seats, switch. Anything you can, change your Brian, socks. Brian, move quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, worst, the smart watch. Worst, <laughs> worst loss you've suffered in your career? I mean, you've been it, in the playoffs and been eliminated. Is, was this even this, harder? This was different because uh, the only one I can compare it to is in 2002, we lost to the Angels, and we gave up 10 runs in an inning after we had just taken the lead off uh, Rodriguez. So, but, man, that was like someone just took took your heart and just was ripping it out pitch oh, by pitch. Because it, 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 it didn't happen. It didn't happen fast. You're not there. You're an athlete. Why would you say that yeah. somebody else yeah, choked? Yeah, you don't see. Come on, defend the athlete. AJ, did y'all choke? Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, 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 man. I ain't gonna lie, we did. It was an amazing weekend, obviously, for the L.A. Dodgers and several other teams. Ooh. In fact, it was just a great weekend in sports. Let's get you all caught up with our Bass Ale Calls of the Weekend. Bass Ale. Now it's time for Calls of the Weekend, brought to you by Bass. Oh, he struck him out, and they are jumping for joy. They are the wild card champions. The Anaheim Angels have won the West. They're the champions of the American League West. Oh, my goodness! What an individual effort! Touchdown Raiders! Picked off by Troy Palomalo. Inside the 10, the wow. 5, Troy Palomalo. The catch by Clayton. Whoa! The throw by Emmett. Wide open. Touchdown, Cardinal. Touchdown, touchdown, oh. touchdown. Oh, he did it again! He did it again! And the ground ball. Americans, Hispanic people, but here's a guy, a Japanese guy, and you remember our relationship with Jap Japan 60 years right. ago? Not so good. And now he's here, and he does this great feat, we're celebrating, so that's what sports You're does for people. You're talking about Ichiro, right? Yeah. Uh, Whatever. Yeah, yeah, the most yeah. amazing thing I've ever, in well, baseball, on, that what? ranks right up there, 260 hits. I mean, I got 470 at bats, I'd have to get a hit. Almost More every, impressive than Bond's 73 homers in a single season? Oh, yeah, I think so. More impressive? Yes. Why? Cheater! <laughs> That's not a hater. Hey, I'm I'm a teammate of Barry. I'm a friend of Barry. I know Ichiro well too. I mean, I just think 260 hits. That's... If you were a friend of Barry, you wouldn't have said that, homie. But Hold let me ask you, Barry. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. You want to come? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this though. If it was opposite and it was America and Japan, would they have allowed him to break a record? Probably not. They probably would have walked. I'd have walked him. No, come on. What did you say before about a hater? The war's over, man. We won. We won. That's not. You would not. Call me whatever you want. I'd have walked him. It happens over there all the time. I would have walked him. 
home run record and they walk him. He kind of like Barry every, every got, game. He'd have got yeah. one shot and he'd have got walked the rest of the year. That's, that's, that's <laughs> disgraceful. All right, there is something you didn't see in our calls of the weekend. It's our Bass Ale reach for greatness. And Brett Favre is actually reaching for the medicine cabinet today because he got lit up by William oh. Joseph in the third quarter. He suffered a concussion. Now, he sat out a few plays, then he told the coach Mike Sherman he was okay, and without a note from the doctor or Epstein's mother, he went back into the game, oh, and of course, Joe Brett Favre did yeah, this. <laughs> trying to pick up a first down. Favre flips it. Javon Walker with a catch and a touchdown. Only Brett Favre can pull that off. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. He should be healthy enough to make his start Monday night against Tennessee. The receiver Tennessee. Help there, too. Unbelievable. Hey, Tom, hey. you look like a peanut right now. That's nice. Hey, your question today, again? guys. Was, uh, Favre's, hold on here a second, guys. i got to get some business here. Was Favre's brain scrambled, uh, touchdown pass, the best moment of the weekend? That's what we want to know. Maybe Tito's going to get your vote. Back from a 29-minute layoff, laid out Ricardo Mayorga, or was that Carrot Top with an 8 Now, here's some other options as well. The throw by Emmett. You can see it coming wide open. Touchdown, Cardinal. 0-1. Oh, High drop. Deep right center field. And it is gone. Walk-off grand slam by Steve Finley. And the Dodgers are champions of the National League left. Can you believe this finish? What does it mean to win here, not only once, but to win here five times? Well, I don't mean right now that he's done one here ten times so uh, I got to do a little more but do more winning but we're gonna get there and uh, he was the master I'm just following his tracks <laughs> I know Krasinski's gonna vote for Finley's Grand Slam by the way log on to foxsports.com on MSN the keyword there is best damn now, of course a great moment for the New York Giants uh, this weekend oh, their first win at Lambeau Field in 33 years and for that let's bring in our good buddy Giants Pro Bowler yeah. Michael Strahan <laughs> What's up, Michael? How are you? I'm good, man. What's happening? We're doing great. Now, Michael, uh, Brian Cox has often told us that as football players, you make this transformation on Sunday. You become this totally different person. Well, John Henderson of the Jacksonville Jaguars does this to get himself amped up on Sundays. <laughs> Joe Sheehan, the... Uh, yeah, uh, do you do, you do that as well, Michael? No, 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 no. I'm, another man's not slapping me like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> he should be mad. He should be killing people after getting slapped like that. <laughs> By a little skinny white guy, too. <laughs> That's, it, that's the only chance we got, man. <laughs> when you let us do it. <laughs> what's, what's that guy's name? Toby? <laughs> <laughs> Your name is Toby. Hey, Michael, we'll talk to you in a few minutes hey, about Michael, the big win big up win, in Lambeau. Big win. All right, apparently Giants Tom thinks it was Tom? Yeah. yeah. Anything else? All right, Michael, hold tight. It was a big win. It was All a right. huge win. Well, we're going to blow it. Well, great day for New York. Bad, uh, bad weekend for the Bay Area teams. Of course, your Giants eliminated from the playoffs. Same with the Oakland A's. The Raiders lost to the Houston Texans. Play the game, Texans. Chris! All right, Tommy, let's play the game. Time for things you wouldn't say to Bay Area teams. The Niners also lost at home to the Rams. Yeah, they're in love. Now, these are things you wouldn't say to oh. Bay Area teams because you like them so right. They all lost, though, so yeah. it's okay. Hey, Giants, Balco Labs called. Does this mean we won't be getting our bonus? Oh. Oh. Yeah, if you said that, hey, that'd be personal sensitive. for me. I know, exactly. <laughs> Hey, Raiders, <laughs> nice fans. If I wanted to spend the evening surrounded by thugs, i go to one of Sally's Monday at ah! yeah. Hey, 49ers, Richard Simmons called. Looks like I'm not the only one getting pounded in San Francisco. Oh my God. <laughs> hey, A's, I hear you're starting in a new TV series, Crushed by an Angel. Oh. Hey, Raiders, if you're looking for some extra points, borrow some from Jen. The consensus results are in. San Francisco is 40% African American, 30% white, and 100% Rams, bitch! That's right, Robbie! Way to get it started, guys! We have a whole lot more coming your way, and it looks like this. Still to come, 33 years, and the Giants finally got their Lambo leap. New York sack machine, Michael Strahan, on what has the G-Men finally going right. It came right down to the wire. Walk-off grand slam by Steve Finley.
the skipper Kevin Kennedy and A.J. Brzezinski hit a grand slam with their playoff picks. Steaming towards the playoffs, Colts gunslinger Peyton Manning. What has him so mentally drained? The only play I ever get to rest on is like when you take a knee before the half or maybe on a goal line handoff. No rest for these guys. <laughs> oh, all right. The Fox NFL Sunday crew put the finishing touches on week four. So sit up and pay attention. The Dodgers put the finishing touches on the West. Owner Frank McCord on the secret to this tremendous turnaround. And martial arts legend Chuck Norris makes his best damn debut and he has a surprise for Tom Arnold. Tom, you have no idea what you got yourself into. Ah! Stick around, the world's greatest late night sports show, the best damn sports show, period, is coming right back. The best damn sports show, period, on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Bass. Reach for greatness. What the Chronicle does, it tells you, if you live in the Bay Area, how you fit in. If you're an engineer in San Jose and you might be interested in a film festival in San Rafael, there's no way you're going to know that unless you read the Chronicle. If you're a teacher in Danville, you're not going to find out that there's an interesting book reading in San Mateo that you might want to go to. If you're a venture capitalist on the peninsula and there's a small startup in Novato, you're not going to know that. The Chronicle is the connective tissue of all these things that go on in the Bay Area. I'm the Olympic and American record holder in the triple jump, and I owe it all to Flex Power. For warm, penetrating pain relief before and after games, I owe it all to Flex Power. Flex Power's unique Flex Zone delivery system goes beyond the skin layer to provide warm, penetrating pain relief to muscles and joints without the medicine smell. 10 years of life on the road, 200 shows a year up on stage shaking my groove thing. I owe it all to Flex Power. Flex Power is available exclusively at flexpower.com. Northern California's first casino resort is now open, and it's a whole new game. The Tundra Double Cab. Where's Larry? Larry! I'll get him. With four full-size doors. Where's Rick? Looking for you. I'll go. Come find him. <laughs> Larry. I'm Larry. Where's Bob? You're Bob. Who am I getting? Okay, where's Jimmy? You get him. You get him. I got him last I'll time. Go. I'll go. Hold on. Where's Rick? I'll, I'll go. go. I'll go. I'm going. <laughs> it's the big tough truck with plenty of room for you and all your friends. Yeah, let's go. If you're sure that's such a good idea. Um, I'll go. I'm going. I'll go. They know which tires belong on your machine. They know what the writing on the side wall means. At Big O Tires, they love tires. They love wheels. And most of all, they love helping people like you save money on tires and wheels. For the Big O Tire store nearest you, go to BigO.com. For a reputation you can ride on Big O Tires. Play with emotion. Spin it. I love it. Pipe. Brought down again by Michael Strahan. Smack talk. Hell rating. Sack master. My dog, Michael Strahan. Talk to the Strahan, so please welcome Giants Pro Bowler, Michael Strahan! Michael, how are you? I'm doing great. Hey, my day, we won yesterday. I'm really doing great because Chris sent me my donuts, oh, yeah. baby! Right. Yeah! For those people that aren't following along, of course, the Which Giants beat my Cleveland Browns, <laughs> and so I bought Tom a dozen donuts last week and sent you a dozen. Are, are they okay? You Thank can, you. You can sink in and have one. They're actually good, man. I'm going to have one bite. You're not supposed to eat on TV, or you might end up looking like Brian Cox. Oh! <laughs> wow! Tom's wow. fatter than I am. Well, 
We're going to weigh in this week, man. we got to weigh in. I've been hitting it hard. Believe me, I've been hitting it. Now, Michael, big win yesterday, and you were so excited. I'm so proud of you guys that you bought our audience, everybody in the audience, a, a gift. Is that right? Yeah. What'd you get? Yeah, I got it. I'm so excited about when I got them a DVD. Yeah. yeah. The history of the Giants. So everybody enjoy it. Hopefully we can add to that later on. Yeah. yeah. It's got all these great little anecdotes. It talks about the 86 NFC Championship game, maybe the greatest game ever played, Colts Giants from 58. And also there is this of Michael Strahan. Listen up. It's going to be physical. It's going to be tough. You're going to be tired. Just as simple as last week. Get that out your mind. We got to go the entire game because the game is won right here in this group. Hey, you're going you to hold me like that all day. I tell you right now, you know everybody going to watch this ass whoop I'm put on you, right? <laughs> all day long. Right, Your boy can't you touch know, me. Right, you know that. stores now it is available and do you even know when they're micing you up Michael um, sometimes you do sometimes you don't sometimes they mic up the guy you're playing against so it, it comes off of him but I knew I was mic'd up for that Eagles game but I was I know I, I talk like that anyway so it doesn't matter all right well you were amped up for yesterday's win that now pushed you to three and one on the season a big victory up at Lambeau because it hadn't happened for the Giants in 33 years now out of curiosity when a visiting player walks into that field do you, do you hear Lombardi's ghost? Is he saying, grab, 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 everybody's grabbing? <laughs> you know, you just, when you walk in there, it's really amazing. You got all these people with these cheese head hats on, and these things look like deer with cheese, or cheese is everywhere. So I, I thought it was hunting season or something, all the camouflage. But it, it, it was one of those things where you had to go into this game, and you know the history of Lambeau, but you can't let history beat you. You have to play current. You have to play within yourself. And that is a, really a good team we beat yesterday. So we were, we were very happy to come out of there with a win. What's the uh, worst thing you've ever heard a fan yell? Or do they yell at you up there at Lambeau? Do you ever hear anything nasty? No, Lambeau, they're nice, man. You're the, hey, Michael, great game, great game. <laughs> Philadelphia? Oh, the Jets. When we, when, we, when we play the Jets in the preseason, those are bad people. <laughs> those are really bad people. <laughs> All right, Mike, let's get back to football here. Brett Fall was knocked out the game yesterday. However, he did come back in for one play and throw a touchdown. How surprised were you to see him not finish the game because we're so accustomed to seeing him play? Well, very. I mean, when he came back, I thought he was okay. And he came back in, threw the ball up. They caught it, made a play. And, of course, I'm thinking, oh, oh man, here we go, another Brett Favre uh, moment for his highlight reel. And when he did come back in, we were all surprised, and, and but we were able to kind of stay focused on whoever they put in there and we were able to make some plays to keep us in the game. Did you talk to him after the game, Michael? I did. He told me that he felt a little, you know, he had just got knocked a little silly out there. And um, I just reminded him that we're both getting a little too old to be playing this child's game. So, you know what? It comes with the territory. He's going to bounce back. And after all these games he started, I'm sure he's going to start this week. He's not going to break that streak. All right, I'm not so sure uh, Jeremy Shockey has an excuse for his actions. What? Whether or not he had a concussion yesterday. Well, Tom, well, come on. this play I'm about what to show he do? everybody. What did he do? Well, he got flanked 15 yards. Let's roll the tape here. Referees. He's been frustrated this season. He gets a first down, gets excited. He spikes the ball, and then he taunts the Packers bench by thumping his chest. So, well, Michael, you don't have a problem.